Hey there, you're listening to You Still Going On About That with Rob Israel and Joseph K. You can find us anywhere you can download podcasts. You could also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at YSGOAT. Thanks for listening. I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. You still going on about? That. All right, Joseph. How you doing? I'm well. Did you have a nice Valentine's Day? I did. I did. I um, We went to uh, a local watering hole that was down the street from where we used to, uh, where you used to live. Um, and it was really nice. We went out and got Thai food. Oh. And then uh, we did something that uh, is probably the most romantic thing you can do. <laughs> Which uh, was? Go to Trader Joe's afterwards. Nice. Yes. <laughs> my my <laughs> wife would not care for that. She, uh, <laughs> well, we take Roger, he has his band thing. So it was like perfect. We were able to go out. We got, went to a Thai place for dinner and everything like that. It was really good. Yeah. While he's there. And then we had time. I'm like, we go to, let's go to Trader Joe's. Go to, <laughs> we need stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing more uh romantic <laughs> yeah we 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 went to a place our our kid went to taekwondo and we went to a place we had detroit style pizza and beer and it was real nice what is detroit style pizza again it's like a it's almost like chicago pizza in that it's like a deep dish thing but it's usually rectangular and yeah. the cheese is on the bottom and the sauce is on the top. Oh, uh, yeah. I had stuff like that in this place growing up in Long Island. I think not call it that, though. They call it like a grandma slice or whatever. Yeah, it's similar uh, to so. that, but the sauce is a little more like oregano heavy. And it's kind of in like a butter, like a grandma slice. Those are really good. But um, the sauce is a little different on these. It's got like well, a... Uh, it's- all right. Well, we're not going to talk about this. <laughs> Sicilian pizza, which is really good. Oh yeah, Sicilian pizza. It's really like good. that, but they put, like I said, the sauce, the cheese is on the bottom, and the sauce is on top. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Justin, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> we have. Uh, we actually have quite a bit. We we have a couple trailers we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the new Flash and Guardians of the Galaxy trailers. Uh, we're talking about the latest episode of Last of Us, which is pretty good. Um, we're talking about the kind of briefly the second season of Hunters and final, final, yeah, season. So, second and final season of Hunters on Amazon Prime. Um, and then we're going to transition to kind of news or current event stuff. We're talking about the UFO stuff that's been happening, uh, the, the train derailments, um, plural, but mostly the one in Ohio. Um, my new favorite character meatball ron meatball ron to... <laughs> meatball ron meatball DeSantis. he is great um yeah, yeah, he's the best I, oh yeah i i think ron meatball, fascist meatballs and spaghetti i think meatball ron is going to ruin this guy i really don't think he's gonna i think this is the beginning of the end for i mean you think ron. the boots would ruin him but no meatball ron meatball Forget it's so it. genius i i worked at a uh detention slash treatment center when i was younger and there's this kid who's kind of mean and a jerk to everyone. And out of nowhere, this one kid in the corner called him Gloppy Joe. Uh, his name was Joe. And it wasn't, he didn't even call him Sloppy Joe. He's just like Gloppy Joe. And that wrecked the kid. The kid never again could bully anyone. Yeah, I don't think he just... could recover from being called Meeple Ron. Like, what's yeah. that? That's in there. You're. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, I like. Hey, oh. meatball! <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're going to be a, there's going to be a debate, and someone's going to call him meatball Ron to his face, and he there's no what? What are you going to ignore it, or yeah. what are you going to like gripe about it, or what are you going to like point out the the you know the racist overtones of it? Nobody to like, say you... I'm not five. <laughs> He can't do that though. That would be a that'd be a good response. But um yeah, but but even then, like if he said I'm not five and the other person were to counter with okay, meatball Ron, then you're still <laughs> screwed. <laughs> well, let's save it for later because um, um I'm gonna give away all the good content. Here. <laughs> then we're talking about Riley Williams, which is um kind of a weirdo <sighs> she's like a weird uh like Imagine like a Twitch streamer if they were like pure evil. 
Yeah. She was famous for stealing Nancy Pelosi's laptop during on January 6th. Yes. And I guess she was getting sentenced so, finally. Yeah. Okay. She's like, um, imagine if Rosal Khan were a, a civil war LARPer. You know, and that's, I think, what this woman is. Um, <laughs> Razzle Khan. <laughs> Razzle uh money launder <laughs> yes um we're not you're, we're gonna talk about the michigan state shooting and um, there's actually a shooting in el paso tonight i don't know if you heard about it oh, great. Um, uh it was at a mall adjacent the united states there's what was a it a, it was at a mall adjacent to the walmart in oh, which great. 22 people were killed like a few yep. years ago yep um and then we're gonna talk about uh a horrible video clip you sent me in which some backwoods Tech state yeah. senators yeah said, uh, asked a really incredibly rude question mm-hmm. to a trans yeah. person it was uh, just like we'll talk about that later yeah so that and that's the show so um first thing we'll talk about are these so if you don't like it then fucking leave you know what we're gonna talk about get the fuck out of here but if, yeah. you, but if you're cool but if you're cool right you'll stick around because we got we're, you know what we'll treat you right yeah you know, yeah you're right right Treat them right. Yeah. Good <laughs> year. They're sticking around. Hey, you don't sit down. Grab yourself a beer. Yeah. Maybe a cigarette or, or a joint or whatever <laughs> you do. Maybe some heroin. Right. Sit back. Could... And just you know, get through your you know, you can, kids. You can pretend you're arguing. You can pretend we're, you're talking to us. Yeah. Yeah. You can dig through your kids' uh leftover Halloween stash for any fentanyl laced uh six slits. <laughs> off brand candy that's clearly fentanyl yep uh the n and n's or uh <laughs> my favorite candy and rizzlers oh um, yeah n and n's i saw this you know the super bowl and i was a little disappointed yeah. in the ad campaign with yeah. rudolph it was like a weird ad where i guess m and m's are now clams uh, something like that. So but now I saw recent ads, and they're not hiding. I, I, I got, uh, I, I had to get something to watch the Super Bowl. Yeah. And we watched. Uh, so I got, I downloaded YouTube, uh, student TV or whatever. Oh yeah. Like free week or something, so I got to make sure to cancel it. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Don't tell Mr. Google. Uh, <laughs> they'll get angry at me. Uh, they're like, "Don't worry, we're gonna make it really tough for you to try to figure out." Yeah, the labyrinth of canceling multiple us. steps to take. <laughs> Why? Why not? What is about the service you don't like? I don't want to pay you. <laughs> 40 bucks. Um, I saw other ads for MM, so they're not shying away, and they were promoting yeah. the woman candy thing and everything like that. So I don't know. I was a little disappointed with that. I was hoping that there would be like some acknowledgement of it, but me too. Whatever. I got my hopes up when I saw the red band trailer. For the new uh M&M's commercial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I think the commercials overall kind of sucked this year. There were like yeah. some weird ones. There's one that uh I saw some people were like really pissed and with good point. Like some like Christian, some weird oh, Christian yeah. commercial. And people were like, Yeah, okay, so you spent twenty two million dollars on this instead of like, I don't know, feeding well, the poor or whatever it is that really Christians are supposed to be doing. No, the worst part is that this group, the commercials are actually like really effective because they come out and they're like, Jesus didn't you go to hell, you're gonna die. Well, they're all like these super progressive messages, like Jesus didn't throw people out of school for being different, he embraced them. Jesus, he gets us. And then there'd be another one where it's like, Jesus didn't care if. Heather had two moms. He get they're all these like pretty progressive messages, but they're funded by Hobby Lobby and this super big anti. That's weird. Uh, get, yeah, it's a very they're, uh, historically known for not being very accepting of uh, diverse well, families or anything yeah. Like that. I think they're designed. I really think they're designed to get people to go to church, hoping to see these things. Then they show up in their church and they're like, "Yeah, of course, Jesus would love." Um, Heather's two moms, if they divorce and each marry a dude and tithe, you know, I mean, like, that's of course, Jesus right. loves you. I think that's the long game is that they want you to, well, to, regardless, they spent like $22 million for a fucking Super Bowl commercial. Mm. So that so that should just say it right there. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, tax them. 
Yeah. He had, yeah. He had 22 million dollars to spend on a Super Bowl commercial. He could pay for taxes. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's how much it costs to advertise in this fucking Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, mm. what do you think? Did you watch the Rihanna halftime? Yeah, I did. I thought she kind of phoned it in, but I tell it's you. All right. I mean, she's like super pregnant. And, but yeah. like, is she like, Ever, I was like watching it. I'm like, you know, she's not moving around a lot. I'm like, is she known for being like aggressive? Like, I was like seeing her stuff before, and like, anytime I ever seen it, she seems like she's always kind of like chill when she sings. She doesn't have like huge dance numbers. She's not Shakira or anything like that. Yeah. You know, like, she's always like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to go look back in my uh, Rihanna archives. Right. And, <laughs> but I don't know her. I don't think I ever known her as like, uh, like, an aggressive like i don't know I, I will say i listened i watched the halftime show and she rihanna i guess for me is like beyonce in that like if you asked me like hey do you like rihanna um i'd be like no i don't i don't necessarily care for her music but then if you start listing off songs she sings it's like wow yeah i, I really like about a dozen of her songs and it's what? the same thing with like beyonce and a few other artists i don't know like, any of their music so what do you mean well, that's the surprising part say, is you might i found you know? it odd that i don't think she was strong enough to carry the entire super bowl and i'm surprised they didn't have like someone come in halfway yeah like razzle con or something just, what like razzle con or something yeah like razzle con uh no or kid rock like from 2003 yeah. you know wearing his american flag cape yeah. no i mean like you know just something you know just, I mean, just like kind of break it up and then like close it out like they usually do something like that so i was kind of yeah surprised she had the you know but here's the thing i got this is something i gotta tell you hmm. i don't care yeah, it's. I mean, ultimately, it's meaningless. Don't give a shit. I just think it's funny how like people like lost their mind. I like Sarah Silverman. I guess they've been. Uh, I've been watching Daily Show a long time, but Trevor Noah left, and I've been seeing yeah. clips on like TikTok. And there's been like multiple hosts until they find one. Right, right. So right. like Sarah Silverman's doing it right now, and she had one funny joke that I thought was pretty good. She said that like because she's like super pregnant. And all the dancers were white, so she's like Rihanna surrounded by all the sperm that didn't make it in. Nice, I, had <laughs> I found nice. it funny. It's probably funnier if you hear it from her. Yeah, little, little her voice, crazy <laughs> voice that she does. If you think of the little yeah. character from uh, Wreck It Ralph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really yeah, I don't know. So speaking of Super Bowl commercials, they were two uh, two yes. trailers, but. They showed only like obviously like 30 second trailers. So you if you went on you went online, you saw the full two, three yes. minute trailers. You went, you saw the teaser, then you then you go and see the full trailer. So they had uh a full trailers up for Fast and Furious, which just looks oh. so I I cannot watch those movies. They're so bad. Yeah. Like, is this the last one or is this like the never, last first never. of like they will never well, be they the are last ending one. it supposedly, but mm. Fool me one, it. fool me nine times. Shame on you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not gonna fall for this trick. Every time I go to a Fast and Furious movie, I'm like, this be it. The last yeah. ride for Dom. finally. I'm looking and for a satisfying resolution to the. I I saw the the trailer for that and like twelve times. Dom, the Vince, uh, what's what's his name? Uh, uh Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel character said family at least twelve yeah. times in the trailer. Oh, it's classic. So corny. It's like it's, it's an applause line. Um, I saw I mean, the fuck, last man, Paul, Paul uh, what was his name? The guy who died? Paul Walker. <laughs> Never mind. I was gonna uh, the up. last Fast and Furious movie I saw, I saw on an airplane, and I forget where I was flying to, but it was like Fast and Furious 7 or something. And there's literally a scene where this dude was like somehow inexplicably in a car on like the 70th floor of a building yeah and he drove out of the building and crashed into another building on like the 60th floor and drove yeah, away and it's just like works. that's not how it works yeah i no. mean look i dude I've i can't never... even like i have a hard time parallel parking sometimes so exactly right i'm, I'm like, like fuck that no <laughs> i don't care what your what your engine's made out of you're not you're not right. doing that. All right, I so guess there was... the last one they went to space. Oh, one of the cars. Cool. And I don't. 
that Elon Musk was in it? Oh, jeez. That wow. explains all the explosions. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so let's start. Let's start with the Guardians of the Galaxy three trailer. Yeah, that <laughs> looks so it. sad. Um, I it looks amazing. Um, I like the one. I thought Yellow Brick Road was a better song choice than the song choice they chose for this one. I forget the name of it. Um, the scenes with Rocket Raccoon. Since you've been of... gone, that one. <laughs> Oh, is that the song? Yeah, I thought it was since you've been gone. Yeah, you're right. It's it just a very like different tempo. Well, you only get to see how Rocket uh, Rocket Raccoon was made. And it's so sad. There's like there was a high evolutionary. I think this uh, is like this character who just like fucks with genetics and shit like yeah. that. Yeah, I'm sure he's gonna be a fucked up villain. The guy from Peacemaker is the villain. He was like the he was like the leader of the group, and he found out he was actually really a butterfly. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah. So he, it's James Gunn, he made that, so he made this, and he's going to play the high evolutionary. Um, I don't know. I mean, it looks cool. I'm just curious. I'm curious how many of them are going to die. I feel like a bunch of them are going to die. I feel Drax going to die. I feel... Everyone thinks Drax going to die because supposedly, like, what's his face had a falling out with Disney, but I'm like, I don't believe that because the storm like months ago doing a whole ad campaign yeah but like hulu and oh i heard he i heard the, he, I heard he wanted to be written out like he he just wanted to move on he's like i think i gotta be written out well, if I he, wanna... he also doesn't think he could like keep up with the working out yeah. like you know because everyone's like why is he Drax is wearing clothes in this one like he's not yeah he's not his abs and i don't know i think people like read into shit and stuff I don't know. I know that he was one of the more uh, vocal when James Gunn was initially fired. Yeah, he I remember like that. The first one and adamantly said, this guy's a good guy and this is fucked up what's happening here. And like he even knows that the people who um, were attacking were like Nazis and shit. And yeah. like, Disney fell, <clears throat> fell for it. And so I thought that was really cool of him, but I I think he I don't believe that at this point that's why he's leaving or if he is gonna leave. Like I said, he just did an, a full ad campaign for like Hulu and Disney. Like people, I mean, it's a paycheck, but I just don't. If he really had bad blood with them, they wouldn't have uh, him. Do that. Yeah, they wouldn't I, have him be in an ad campaign. Uh, it could just be that it's time for Drax to go. You know, there's tons of Marvel characters. You can only yeah maybe he doesn't want to do it anymore. Maybe. He's gonna get a plum gig in uh, James Gunn's Dis- uh, DC universe. Like I could see him playing like a really cool villain or something in that yeah. universe. You know, like fuck, know. He'd, be great, he'd be a great dark side. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, look, I this I'm sure this is gonna be great. James Gunn has never turned out a bad comic book movie. I'll be honest, with you, Guardians of the Galaxy two. I I like one a lot. Two is good but there's a lot of things about it i don't like um yeah it's a little like schmaltzy in the middle i don't know there's some things about it i just i like i, I don't that. know i, mean, I know yeah. what you mean but i yeah um i don't know I, I i i think this one's gonna be good a lot of time has passed like i feel like uh well when we're gonna get adam warlock in this they're really not showing you too much about him in it i just think it's funny who's playing him it's like this guy like bulked up and shit. He was like this. Have you ever seen that movie Meet the Millers with like um the guy who plays like Coach Lasso, whatever his name is? It's like a movie where he oh, pretends yeah. he's like a he has to pretend he like he hires these people to be his family, basically. They're not a real yeah. family. They're like I don't know if they're like smuggling drugs or something, but like the guy was he, I think his name's like Will Coulter or something. He played like a little dorky kid in that. And now he's going to be Adam Warlock and he looks like a fucking badass. He like bulked up. Huh. Pretty funny. Yeah. You ever see that Black Mirror? The one where it was like a choose your own adventure? Yeah. The um, band, Bandersnitch. He was, or... Yeah. He was the guy who was like the programmer and he takes the acid oh, and he like yeah, walks yeah. up. A, and then he just walks up a fucking building and dies. Y- yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the one who's playing Warlock. All right, I, think, cool. I feel like they're keeping him under wraps. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's a big character. Some people were like a little bummed that he was not in Infinity War and Endgame because in the comics and Infinity Gauntlet, Adam Warlock was like. We talked about this, yeah. Yeah, a major part, but 
whatever. I mean, I, I didn't care. I, I felt like for the story and it made sense for it to make sense in the Marvel universe that we had at the time, adding him in would have probably just felt tacked on. Right. I think, yeah, I I think it will be good. Um, I think it'll be sad, you know, is my fear. Not my fear, but like <laughs> my fear. I'm gonna be so scared when that little otter hugs. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, those things kind of like t- tug at my heart. Um, I think yeah. it'll be good. It'll be a little bittersweet because it feels like, um, well, definitely like all the trailers, all the teasers, whatever, have felt real like this is the end of this thing that has been real fun. And, and cool. I like they talk about like Gamora and how, like, in the trail, I thought it was good. They talk about Gamora and like how, um, that's not Gamora. Like, it's not the Gamora that yeah. she predate. That Gamora predates. That's the Gamora with none of the experience of being in the Guardians of the Galaxy. This, right. Gamora, this Gamora is like before the first movie. Because yes. Gamora dies in Infinity War and then in Endgame when they time travel, Gamora travels with Thanos. Because Thanos, that Thanos was from like, let's just say like early 2014 or whatever. Right, predating right. Gardens of the Galaxy, and you know, so she wasn't reformed. She still kind of, she was still kind of working with Thanos at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but so she didn't have any of that relationship. So that's kind of like a cool little like, yeah, that's gonna be like a little set like where like Star Lord, like the love of his life or whatever it is, the his girlfriend, whatever, like, mm-hmm. like she's a different person. Yeah, it's a it's a different it is because that person it, died and this person is like it's like you either got to start over or nothing will ever come out of it. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know. We'll see. I don't really yeah. have anything else to say about it. I'm sure it'll be fun. Uh, yeah. Know, Groot looks funny in it. He's like all bonky now. Yeah. You got to see him look like in the Christmas special. And me and my son both thought he looked really weird. He did look weird, but um, but, I mean, he is a, a sentient tree, so. Well, he's also, again, he's, <clears throat> and I like, like James Gunn's like, you know that Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy? That one died. <laughs> <laughs> so Groot from the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy, the little stick. That came to life. Yeah, it's a new being. Like basically, Groot's son. Like it's not. It's his own thing. He has no memories of Groot. It's not. Yeah. So that's why he looks a little different. Like he doesn't. So. That's funny because there's like a parallel there with Gamora. So. Yeah, a little bit, but I mean, like it's interesting because, like, you know, except for the first movie, the Groot that we've had in the MCU has been that little. Little yeah, the twig that grows in the end, the dancing thing in the end of Guardians of the Galaxy. I just like that. I think a lot of people really thought that that he was just grew like starting over. Yeah, and James which Gunn's doesn't really make it. any sense. Like, why yeah. would he regress mentally? Like, well, he's like regrowing, so it's like he's like I don't know, he's like a baby yeah. or something like that. But eventually, he'd be himself. But uh, James Gunn's like, no. Mm-hmm. That guy died. That's because he's like, because it, it, and it makes sense too, because it's like he sacrifices himself for everyone yeah. in the movie. So I think he wanted to make sure people were like, no, that was like a real sacrifice. This isn't like a cheat mm-hmm. where we get to bring him back. It's like, no, that group even that you saw dancing in Guardians of the Galaxy too, that cute little thing. That's a different group. Yeah. Group <laughs> you liked in the first movie. It's dead. Dead. It's firewood. firewood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He sacrificed himself. Uh, Flash, uh, what do you think? Uh, Ezra Miller, huh? Oh, that gets, looks what like... do you think he gets arrested in the middle of the movie? <clears throat> that that looks amazing. And look, it, I, does. I mean, that... it looks fucking incredible. It and does. It's funny too. Like it should, it should bother me that like they're retreading like Man of Steel shit, but I feel like it's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. So, it... This is here's some things I figured out from this trailer. I, I, I went to the archives and studied yeah. <laughs> on this one. So the trailer for the, we are one. It you see the Ben Affleck Batman, which is cool. Yep. I like that Batman. I feel I like it sucks that that didn't work out. I think he would have been a great Batman in that DC. I agree. Universe. And we're just you know 
it was just a lot of bullshit that got in the way. Like we never got that Batman movie. There was supposed no. to be a Batman movie. And I think it would have been awesome. Yeah, I do. We just, it was just too much bullshit behind the scenes and it just never happened as much as I like, I mean, like the Matt Reeves Batman's like, okay, but I'll be honest with you. I would have preferred to have seen the, the oh, yeah. Batman with him fighting Deathstroke. And like, yeah. I would have preferred to see more um, Ben Affleck Batman. I like the, uh, the Twilight guy, Robert Pattinson. I like the, the yeah, he's that a good Batman. Job, but like yeah. I said, if I had my choice, I would have preferred yep. to have seen that Batman movie. I think that one, Regardless of what you think of the Zack Snyder movies and everything like that, I think it would have been like its own thing that would have fit kind of. Yeah. But I think it would have been like just a cool like. Um, I don't know. Like I said, the Matt Reeves one's unique. I liked it, but okay. So he's in it. I don't know how much he's in it. We do see in the trail though that clearly he is Batman in the movie at some point too. Yep. So he goes. So basically, like the plot from what we're gathering is kind of follows. I don't know if you ever read Flashpoint. No, but I'm I'm familiar with the story. Like so I've Flash, read a lot about it. They use Flashpoint as a way to restart the DC universe, and that's when they did the whole New Fifty Two. Yes, Flash went in and it just kind of like changed everything, and that's how like they were able to reboot the entire DC universe. So he, had, you know, the whole plot is like Barry Allen wanted to like save his mother. Eobard Thorne killed his mom. It's the Reverse Flash in the comics, mm-hmm. the TV shows, and all that. And he goes there, but he's basically going to like a different universe, and I guess the Flash. That we know, I don't know what year it's supposed to be, but the other you see two flashes in this trip in this yes. trip. The other that's supposed to be 2013. Um, All right, it's he's going back in the past when his mother dies or something like that. That's 2013, and so I watched the thing they pointed out like the Barry Allen has like a Pacific Rim poster on the wall, which is oh, okay, yeah, 2013. Like little little things that show that, and it makes sense too because Man of Steel takes place in 2013. So basically, he's going to like a universe where like Superman doesn't exist. Yes, and that's why it, the threat of Zod coming in and like that. But then you see that Kara Zor El, which is basically Supergirl. We get yep. to see that she looked awesome as hell. Yeah, like, oh yeah. Sick. So in the Flashpoint world, you find out that Batman is dead. Or Bruce Wayne died. It was Bruce Wayne and Martha. You're told Bruce Wayne died and supposedly Martha Wayne died. And that Thomas Wayne became Batman. So Michael Keaton is not Bruce Wayne. He's Thomas Wayne. He's Thomas Wayne. And it makes sense now from like a timeline thing and him being older. Like he's in his 60s as opposed to like in his. So he's in his like mid 60s as opposed to his early 40s. And yeah, it's it's awesome. I don't think people realize that. We're thinking. I didn't realize that. Yeah. If fo- I'm not I'm just guessing because if it follows the Flashpoint storyline, right? Then we are. That is Thomas Wayne and not Bruce Wayne. I think some people are going to be confused. Like, what do you mean? That's Batman from the 1989 movie. Right. Right. Shut up. <laughs> Let's watch the movie. Uh, and uh, so I think that might be kind of cool. I think I'm pretty sure that's the direction it's going to go. In. And right. in the Flashpoint world, there is no Superman. What happens in this world? Is Superman, instead of being caught or being saved by a, a loving couple, Martha and Pa Kent, yeah. the government snatches up the pod and basically buries him in the ground, and like in a vault where he's not exposed to the sun. He doesn't have oh, right. powers. He, in this storyline, he's like super skinny. He's like malnourished. And then finally, like in the, towards the end of the comic, uh, spoilers for yeah, Flash yeah. Comic that came out in 2011, uh, he breaks out and that and then the sun hits him. And even though he's like malnourished and really thin, he's still like fucking he's like super strong because it's like the sun just feeds him immediately. And right. I think that what they're doing then instead is they're subbing out that Superman from Flashpoint and replacing him with, with Supergirl. All right. Because in the story, Supergirl, she's like supposed to be there before. She was supposed to get there before Clark Kent or something like that. And she ends up showing up later. So she ends up being like younger than Superman is. Because like, I don't know. Right. Time like dilation or whatever. Spaceship, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Go ask Einstein. I'm not a fucking. Right. So. 
I think that's what they're doing there. So there's no Superman as well. Like clearly the baby was killed or like died on the way or never made right, it. Right, right. But she did. So that's why like she's wearing that weird, like she's not wearing her outfit yet. You know, right. she's like, wearing, like white, like a looks like a gurney or something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think that's kind of cool. They're sending out other theories is is that that's not Barry Allen. That other the other one. Oh, okay. It is the reverse flash. Mm. Because and that he's evil, actually. This younger, this the younger one he yeah. comes into. Maybe he takes on the guy. So Barry Allen, he's tricking him. Because they say, like, if you look at it, they're setting it up because this Barry Allen's wearing yellow and black, which is like basically reverse right, flash okay. yellow. <clears throat> and there's a scene in the trail when you see them hitting each other, like their yep. costumes. Yeah. And one of them's like a little more like on the yellow side. So oh. I I I think that I don't know where this story's gonna go, but it looks like it's gonna be pretty fucking awesome. Like I said, it's funny that you know Michael Shannon's back as Zod. Yeah, and I I should hate this because I can't stand Man of Steel. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like this is gonna be so much better. <laughs> it just looks just from the trail. It looks great. It looks really good. And um, it, the idea that like this invasion happened, but it's like you don't have a Superman now, so it's like they gotta like they gotta stop it. Yeah. And I think it's kind of cool that like if that is that, that Michael Keaton is not playing Bruce Wayne, he's playing Thomas Wayne. Yeah, that'd be cool. Now in the comics, what they did to make him look kind of different, the bat symbol was like red and gr- like his outfit was like gray, black, and different. red. You didn't have a yellow or like that. But in the movie, it looks like it's just the traditional Batman outfit. Like it's yeah. pretty cool. Someone like you see in the background there's seven Batman costumes, and one of them is like the blue and gray one from like yeah. Neil Adams era. Right, movie. right. Now yeah. this would be kind of cool. I doubt they'll do this, but in the Flashpoint story, there was a Batman miniseries. So they did the Flashpoint miniseries, and then they did like a bunch of other miniseries. You know, try yeah. to get dollars capitalize on it. Yeah. What? Capitalize on it. Yeah, yeah. But the Batman one was sick because. Oh. The Joker, okay, so you find out, spoilers, guys. Spoilers. Yeah. If you don't want to know what this is, skip. I don't know how long I'm going to talk. It's going to be like a minute or like an hour. Sure. <laughs> find out. The Joker in this universe mm-hmm. is Martha Wayne. Oh. She went fucking, she went insane with because of the death of her son and became the Joker. Oh, wow, okay. So, and I thought that was like pretty cool. And you don't realize that to like the third issue that that it was Martha Wayne the entire time. Wow. It was like a cool little like, it's just fucked up. You know, he became like Thomas Wayne became his Batman and he's like right. darker than Batman. You know, he's more fucked up than that. Like he's more violent than Batman is. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, the fact that she became the Joker. It was like a cool little twist. You know, it's kind of just like a. I thought that was like clever. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't like this else world stuff. So if you do something clever, that's why I like what if and everything like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And no, they're nice. You can do something interesting and put the characters in like a same character in a totally different situation and it becomes unique and like almost like creative. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I doubt they'll incorporate that in there the joker being mark the one i doubt it but um and again i could be wrong it might not be it could just be an older bruce wayne yeah but it would make sense <clears throat> if you've gone to a different alternate reality and it's the same time frame and batman exists in your world and he's like 40 time wise it makes a lot of sense yeah that's yeah. why i like the spider-man movies the like when they the you know the spider-man movie yeah when, Tony Maguire one. Wait, wait, wait. Like, like, why does so I don't you know what I'm not even gonna complain. Yeah, yeah. So no, like, why does, why like, would Spider-Man exist like 20 years before this Spider-Man? You know, like mm-hmm. that I'd say like Austin Powers says in the second Austin Powers movie with the guy from Logan's run. <laughs> like we were camera and they say, just enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like they, there's like a time travel scene and they're like talking and like I got I forgot the guy who was from Logan's Run. He was plays it Michael like, York? Yeah, he's yeah. in the Austin Powers movie. He plays like the M or whatever, and they're just yeah. like, like hey, just enjoy yourself. Don't don't, don't overthink don't about it. it. Just just don't worry about it, man. Like don't try to figure out yeah. the time travel thing. Just just enjoy yourself. 
It's about a movie. It's a movie about a, a guy that runs really fast. Don't worry and, about you know just because <laughs> Burt Bacharach shows up and sings in 1969. In right. Yeah. With Elvis Costello. Don't think about it too much. Just don't don't try to figure out how they got there too. Yeah. Uh, I think this will be cool. Uh, oh, I know it's, people, be great. it's so funny. I see like all the the chuds that like, all right, well, El- Ezra Miller does definitely deserve something, but there, there's some people who just straight up hate him because he's like a, well, first he, of all, I guess the proper term is they. Yeah, I guess he's he's it's, non-binary, uh, right? Yeah. I mean, not, yeah. Right. And I think they hate him. They hate them because of that. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of reasons to be like, I don't he's, know, this guy is he, kind of fucked up. Yeah, he's he seems like he's got either a lot of problems or uh, whatever. I mean, like, I'm, I'm not talking must, about like identity must have problems. They locked I'm... in that same room that they locked Kyra Zor Ellen in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, away from he's on because I haven't heard a peep from him in the past couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's just like kind of a, a, a loose cannon. Um, Anyway, the, the movie looks great. I'm gonna kind of crazy that like he was casted or they were casted in like literally back in like 2013 to be the flash. Yeah, yeah. And where it's like this movie was delayed so many fucking it was supposed to come out like it was literally supposed to come out in like 2017, 2018. Yeah. Originally it was gonna be like a flash cyborg movie. And then it turned to something else, and then they didn't announce it was gonna be Flashpoint. It got delayed over and over, and then COVID came that screwed everything up. I think the yep. movie was, I think the movie was like wrapped up a year ago. It was supposed to come out last year, and they ended up yeah. like dang it. Um, I think oh now it works out fine, especially with like James Gunn and oh yeah, like, use this movie as like a launching pad to kind of restart the DC universe. But it's just funny where it's like. You know, as of right now, like we're not saying that they're not going to recast Mil- Ezra Miller as the Flash. If it, but like if the movie does well, like come on, unless he like, I don't know, punches someone in the face the day the movie comes if out. If it does like, well and he stays reasonably well put together, then I'm sure he'll go forward with it. You know, like a sequel or something. You know, he I mean. Really- they definitely seem much better in this movie. Like, I'm not saying like as Miller seems mentally healthy. I'm saying that the character is portrayed better from the trailer. Yeah. I'm saying. I feel like okay, so like in the in the Joss Whedon cut of Just League, he was kind of corny, but I felt like in the Zack Schneider cut, they were like really playing up, like trying to play up or something like he was like autistic or something. And like he almost made me think of the character, the nerd from Greece. <laughs> you know, so Eugene. That, yeah, that guy who used to see yeah. like the 80s movies. And like, yeah, like he just pop up. He was like in 1942. Yep. I swear he was in like he was in everything for a little while. Yeah, um, it's like a very bizarre man. Like, is there something wrong with this guy? Like, he was just like a nerd, and he was like, he kind of like predates Pee Wee or something like that. But like, he is a kind of definite Pee Wee vibe. Yeah. But like, I swore that's like Ezra Miller's how he came off in that just this action or just like movie was Eugene from Greece. <laughs> yeah, I you know that's that's really funny. I he there was a big change in the way that character was portrayed. I liked them both. You know, I mean, like the um the Whedon and the Snyder takes on the Flash. I just think Ezra Miller's really great as the Flash. I mean, he, in my mind, it's like a really great fit for the role. Um, well, we'll he, see. Well, well, no, the movie comes out in June. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I, I don't think I've ever been excited as much to see a DC movie in a long time. Like, really excited to see this. I think, like, I think What's-Her-Face, uh, I don't know the woman playing Supergirl. I think she's going to be sick. I'm yep. curious if like that's going to be Supergirl in the movie, or if they're just going to. I mean, it's. I think it's kind of like I don't know if they cast anyone yet. They're probably just looking at like this. Okay, the movie's a hit, and it does right. well. People respond well to her. She's probably going to be the Supergirl in 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 that Supergirl. Uh, I forgot the name of it. It's called like uh, yeah, or something like that or <clears throat> yeah. I forget the name of it. Um... Woman of Tomorrow or something like that. Something like or, that, yeah. Like it'll probably be her. And and I'd be like, cool, you know, like if yeah. that's the case. 
But we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think it's kind of cool too. It's like, yeah, why is a Supergirl a brunette? I don't, I don't understand that, and that really confused me at first when I first saw. Uh, no, um, why isn't she? You know what I mean? Yeah, like well, she's blonde, but like in theory, shouldn't she be like a brunette? Yeah, th- th- that's a good point. Um, I don't know. I mean, I come from a family of brunettes, and my hair was blonde for years. It's still yeah. blonder than everyone in my family, so I don't know. Yeah. The milkman was blonde. <laughs> I, I might like, spit out of my dad. I, I don't. All right. Well, that, next up. like my dad, too. I don't know. <clears throat> next up, we got um, the, the middle, the midway point of Last of Us. Yeah, it was good. It was great. Yeah, that was, uh, that was. uh You said it was brutal, right? Yeah, it was. um It was the well the fir- the opening scenes where the chuds of Kansas City took over Kansas City and like killed off all the Fedrick people. Um, I found that really brutal. I mean, it was a very very well, people were getting hanged that, and that that uh, Fedrick was terrible. That yeah. they would kill people and stuff like that, but these people weren't any better. They were worse, I think. Like Fedra seemed like terrible, but like you could probably learn to live within their rules. It wouldn't be fair and good. I mean, look, I'm not defending Fedra, but like well, you they were fucking you some kind of government patsy. They were predictable. Are you a status? <laughs> they were predictable. But then Kathleen and her MAGA chuds get together and they take they have no her. resources. No, she's killing they, a fucking doctor because he didn't he didn't fucking fill a, a, an immediate need and not thinking the fact that like yeah. I don't know, maybe it's a good idea to have a fucking doctor around right yeah or like <laughs> she, I, she was storming the capital yeah right I right, saw that, that image you posted <laughs> it Kathleen, was yeah they suck no they were no they were no better they were probably well, and they were worse it was and the 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 cra- the the thing that really struck home is at the very end okay so like i know i'm I'm jumping to the end i'm assuming a lot of it's people fine. have seen it Spoiler. Uh, everything we talk about yes was just spoiled so she she wants to kill henry um or no so michael henry and, but, in the last episode just catching these up yeah, yeah. in the last episode you're there's a guy named henry mentioned you introduced kathleen you know she's bad she kills his doctor and she's pretty ruthless yep. And she keeps talking about this guy, Henry. Henry, like, I guess, betrayed them or whatever. And then in the end of the episode, basically, because uh, Joel and uh, what's the girl's name again? Uh, Ellie. Ellie, like, took on a bunch of those guys. And then they were kind of resting. And they woke up and they had guns pointed at them. And it was Henry and Michael. Michael. And yeah. Well, so, uh, like you thought they were like father and son, but they're actually brothers. He's yes. Henry's his older brother. So you're introduced in this episode, and you get like kind of start like you said, it's kind of like a flashback of showing them taking over, killing any of the remaining Fedra people and just taking over. Um, I don't know how long time that is, but then you see um uh, um uh, Henry and Michael, I said. I think it's Henry the, and Michael. Yeah, on the run. You find out the little kid's death. Basically, you find out the whole thing is that Henry, Michael had some kind of cancer, yep. and Fedra has drugs, Yep. and I guess he became like an informant, and yes. I love Kathleen's such a shitbag, like in the end of the episode, when Henry is like kind of caught by her, and yeah, she's yeah. like, you know what, I mean, he was supposed to die, you know, it's just one kid, like, she doesn't give a shit, she has like no, she, has well, no the- she doesn't give a fuck. The irony of that scene, that's what I was going to say, is that she's like, kids, are, why do you even care? Kids are supposed to die. It's just one kid. But the whole fucking reason Kathleen is doing any of this is because her brother died. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe your selfish. brother was just supposed to die. Shit. Yeah. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe exactly. that's it. Like, she's, a, she's a chud. She's a selfish, yeah. self-centered she, MAGA chud. You she know? can't, like, the rules that she wants to live by are that's like fair unfair, but everyone else has to just deal with it but like with her it's, it's different you know and it's it's the maga chud mentality it's really yep. yeah um but it was a great episode and this is the first episode where we see a lot of the infected you finally get a a uh it's been like 
it's the first time since episode two that you got to really see some infected, uh, and you get a fucking swarm. Yeah. So the whole plot is, uh, so eventually, like, you know, it goes back to the scene now. Because uh, Henry sees Joel and Ellie across the street. Yes. And you can tell right from the bat that they really had no intention of, like, killing him. It was more like, we need your help. And yeah. you have a gun pointed at them because it's like, it's more like, and they weren't, they weren't even like loaded. Supposedly. Yeah. Later on, he reveals the, the, the gun was unloaded. Yeah. It was just like, they're desperate. They need to get the hell out of there. They need people. And he saw that he took on a bunch of them. So it's like at strength and numbers type thing. And everything. yeah. Uh, but he's telling them like, there's a path to get out. It's underground. <clears throat> and they're like, underground. <laughs> That's okay. what those fucking things are. And he's like, no, there aren't any. It's been like years. It's like, he said it Fedra cleaned it out. I heard this before, you know, they killed all the Fedra, that Fedra had pushed them into the tunnels and then killed off most of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, you know, they bond, they get to know him. You know, like I said, the one kid's death that really bonds with Ellie. Yep. Really cute and everything. They go to like a, you get to see more of like uh, some of the thing, like when they go underground, there's like this place that was clearly used during the early times of like a bomb shelter or something yeah and there was like almost like looked like a little classroom and everything like that and then they they make it out no issue you know they get out but then they're on the other side of the town start getting shot at by this old man mm-hmm. joel gets goes in there basically tells like him like you don't have to do this yeah but I please, bet you that guy's like what He's like, please don't go for the gun, you know. Yeah, because well, but that guy's probably like, if I don't kill you and I let you go, I'm dead. I'm yeah. dead either way. Because well, we Kathleen, didn't realize I mean, Kathleen will probably just have one of those guys kill me. Because that's how you know Kathleen's evil. Because in the beginning of the episode, too, you see a scene where Kathleen's talking to all the people who are like the traitors or whatever. Yeah. And she's like, oh, what? You needed like, you know, a drug or an apple. So you basically turned on all your people. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're all informants, and she gives some bullshit about like how she's gonna like I don't know, give him a trial, or whatever. But then she tells like her guy to literally just mow the whole room down. Yeah, kill like I don't know, it was like thirty people. There are kids in there too. Yeah, you know, like she's uh she was evil. Like uh, uh like there's I mean you could say like desperate times or like that, but no, she was a she was a, she was Ashley Babbitt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Babbitt was in the last of us. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, and so when you get to that scene in the end, and it tells like the old man, like he has to kill the old man. I guess mm-hmm. there, there's been a radio in there or whatever. They start coming at them with the cars and shit. They're gonna like run over. Yeah. They're shooting at it in the buses. Joel gets a shot off of one of them, makes the truck that has like a fucking shovel on the front or whatever that would just right. kill that thing at the front um crashes into a house and you know there's like the whole scene with like her and that's why i said when she's telling like henry like you know he was clearly meant to die and she's like, yeah, yeah. like an asshole about it and then all of a sudden the, that truck <clears throat> sinks into the ground and the hole opens up and like hundreds of those fucking things come out yeah Darting like, out. Crazy. Like it leaping so out. Yeah. It was like the special effects are amazing. Yeah. Like well, the young the the little girl that had like a mushroom growing out of her face. Yeah, that yeah, that's the one who takes out Kathleen, the little yes. girl. Yeah, that was a great bit. scene. Terrifying scene. Yeah, the way it crawls around the body. Yeah. It's it's like said, flopping you know, around and shit. It's like a puppet. Yeah. It's like the mushroom on the head is really the organism. Yeah, it uses your body. You're you're dead basically. Your brain's gone or it doesn't exist anymore, and it's basically controlling the body like a puppet. So it makes sense like how it moves. It doesn't move. Yeah, like, <laughs> like a wait, human would. It's like moving the way like a thing that doesn't have control. Of the body 100 percent or you know what yeah. I mean? like it's just like it's never learned to like but then you got to see like i guess one of the characters from the video game they're called bloaters yeah yeah but it looks like it's like the size of the fucking hulk yeah and, and it's got like a protective shell around it yeah like you can't well, Joel shoot it. said that that is clearly one that probably um has been mutating since the beginning yeah yeah so that 
most of them die like a couple of months into it, but some have, are just as you know, 20 years old, like they're so they're just like these giant monsters. And I, I, I've seen some of the other video game, I was like looking it up, yeah, yeah. There's like one called like a rat catch or whatever, and it's the like, rat king, yeah. yeah, rat king, and it's like multiple ones just fused yeah. together, like this giant monster. So I think that's gonna be like when we get to that point, it's gonna be like sick, but. That thing like came and like tore get that. Like Kathleen had a guy that worked like her number one or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Where he just like, that thing just like rips his head off. Yeah, like, it was, it was it, it, the, the whole and they escape. They got the hell out of there. Right. Oh yeah. But you see them just it kind of cuts away. The way it cuts off, it's like pretty quick. You see the whole thing. That city's done. Oh yeah, like, yeah. It's done. Like. So they clearly, yeah, they were just further underground. Yeah. They clearly were just further underground. They weren't in the tunnels, and it probably wasn't a good idea to hang out down there. Yeah. My guess is that Fedra pushed them back a ways and then sealed up the tunnels and then forgot about it, you know? Like, and they just, like, mutated and waited until yeah a big hole in the ground opened up. Right. That was so sick. Yeah, that was like, okay, yeah. The... And uh, what else was there? Yeah, the I mean, there was like, oh, this well, the a- sad, the big thing was the sad. There's a very sad part at the very end. So they, it ends with the four of them in a motel, and Ellie yep. is, you know, bonding with the little kid still, and they're talking, and the little kid has like a little like thing that he writes on that magic like, slate or something. Yeah, that you can like pull and it, it erases. And he shows the bite. And yeah. he thinks that like a cut or a bite or whatever that happened because they're all being attacked by those things. Um, she's like, well, my blood, she thinks like her blood's magic or something like that. And she cuts her, she cuts her hand to ble- bleed because she has the virus, but you know, cause that's like the whole point. Right, right. And she thinks she could like save this kid by like just touching her. Like, I don't know if she hand. even thinks that, but she's going to try it, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, she wants to, you know, right? She kills off this kid, and then of course the next day she wakes up and the kid's like weird, sitting on the end of the bed, and he's yep. like, <laughs> like a rabid little like. Fuck, he turned, yeah, yeah, he turned real quick, and then the the runs in, and the Henry's like shoots at them to keep them away, but he ends up killing the brother, you know, killing it because it's not even yeah. brother anymore, and then he ends up just killing himself. So it's just it's like sad, like. You know, you got to meet these characters and they're dead. You know, it's like yeah. almost like the same thing, like with uh Bill and Frank, right? Yeah, yeah. You got to meet those characters. They're you got to see their story and they're dead. And then you got to kind of see well, their story and they're dead. It's just like sad. Yeah. It's sad because it's good time, it's, good time show. Happy to watch it, you know. Well, um, especially because the um the, the Joel spirit? character, right before all that happened, kind of said to Henry, like because they'd been real standoffish prior to this. Yeah. He said, like, hey, we're going out to Colorado. We we can travel together. You want to come with? Not Colorado. And, it's uh, uh, Wyoming. Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah. And, uh, like and Henry was like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And he... And it was like this really nice moment where, like, oh, they're going to have... They're going to be friends. You know, they're going to have yeah. people, you know, and it's, yeah. like, real heartwarming. And then, no, they, they both die. So... Yeah. No, nah, it you know, and they kind of move on. Obviously, they, it ends with them like traveling. I don't know what they say in the end, but it's just you know. Well, Ellie. Um, oh, they puts, bury they bury him. they bury they him. him. She yeah. puts a note on Michael's grave that says, "I'm sorry," and then she's got a real change in attitude because all up until this point. I mean, aside from the action scenes, she'd been joking around and she'd been much more like a little kid reading that joke book and stuff like that. Yeah. And here she's like, which way is West? And he tells her and she's like, let's go. And she's just like, no nonsense and kind of like jaded. Um, and it's a like a real loss of childhood. Not that she had much of a childhood anyway, but it's definitely a moment where you're like, she's she's not going to be a little kid anymore. You know, she's, she's really been fucked up by all this. So. But, and also like, you know, she's not so magical, you know? Yeah. She, like, right. She really, you know, she, I think she really believed that she could like save this kid by just putting her yeah. blood on it. And, like it would counteract the, but clearly it needs to there. If therefore, if she is like 
they could do anything with her blood or do anything to like stave off this virus. I would imagine it would just be like, if they can do anything with that, it would be like a vaccine where it's like, you know, it's like all those morons who didn't get vaccinated. And then like when they're yeah. dying and they're like, oh, I can't get the vaccine now. And they're like, oh, that's not that's how it works. works. It's, it's not a like cure. A it's a vaccine. It's a preventative. Yeah. Like we could have like, you know, if you got it like a month or two ago, you probably wouldn't be here right now. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it, yeah. And that's it. Like with the whole zombie slash infected, it, the, the cure never fixes the people that already have it. Like it right. can't, they're, they're, decomposing you know yeah their brains are even like chewed up by whatever infection is and by the time you know it would be like a preventative thing that like right so yeah um really good episode show definitely one of the more solid shows out there Uh, and now it's over halfway done because we are um i think there's only like what three left uh four left i think i think there's a total of nine Oh, okay. And I think that we're like middle of this episode. Did you the see the preview point. for next week? I did not. I never watched the previews. Um, I watched the preview. Oh, no, I, I take that back. You. I did. Okay. with You get the spoilers. They're in the snow and he meets his brother. They're in Wyoming, and, clearly. It looks like it's pretty developed town. Yeah. And his brother's there. Yeah. See his brother finally. So, but then they say like the, the tag at the end is like the only people that can betray you are the people you trust or something like that. Yeah. Like, some yeah. woman says that to Ellie. I don't, I mean, obviously it's a trail of bullshit, but who knows, but it looks like, a looks like it'll be good. You know, like I said, I like that. It's like, it looks like a town that's more like, like they got their shit together a little bit. Yeah. More. It's like, it's like community and it's not. So that was the thing about like Kathleen and them. It was like the way they ran shit, it, it would never have, thrived it would just yeah. be this, like fascist like you know they would have just turned on each other and, until they were all dead i wonder if they're gonna do i read the book i'm not talking about the movie but the book world war z and a big plot point in the book world war z was that there weren't that many zombies in the mountains or in canada or shit because it was too cold like the the bot the reanimated bodies wouldn't move that fast i wonder if like there's going to be fewer infected in i mean mushrooms don't really grow that much in colorado right like they require kind of humid conditions yeah so i wonder if they are more like more advanced because they don't they deal with that threat of the virus isn't as high yeah, it's less less significant. Probably still happens. You know, I mean, I'm sure it still happens and stuff, but like, not like, uh, not like Florida, which I imagine is just oh, completely overrun. Governor, just... Governor Ron, uh, what is it called again? <laughs> they call him Toad Toadstool Ron. Is what no, what, no, what is it? Toadstool Ron is his other name. Toadstool Ron over there. Look at the little stumpy Toadstool Ron. Magic boots. <laughs> No, what are those things called again? They have a name for it in the in the show. The, the, the clickers. Disease. No, not the clickers. There's like another word for it. The cordyceps. Yeah, cordyceps. Ron de cordyceps. <laughs> Look at Ron, little Ron de cordyceps. Marching with his boots down to yep. to fix things <laughs> in the Everglades. Florida. That's just hundred percent infected. I'm um, Mister Manager. I'm Mister. Yeah. All right. So. I mean, it was cool. Let's yeah, talk about Hunters. I mean, it, uh, Hunters yeah. season two. Yep. Hunters is a show we talked. We did a whole episode. I think we did a whole episode on Hunters. Find it in the archives. It's probably around the hundreds. Oh yeah. Um, it it was it aired like I feel like it aired in like 2021 earlier. I felt like it was like during a pandemic. It's really when I yeah that sounds was, like, right. Pre-pandemic like filmed before the pandemic and yeah. uh it was just like an awesome show about like in the 70s there's like a group of people that you know you would always hear about eli wiesel is that his name yes yeah like the Nazi Nazi hunter. Hunter. I mean, you know he wasn't like taking out like a a steak and hunting the nazis like they're vampires no but there was a like, real he got like a nazi out of um south america in like a pretty crazy yeah. story if i remember yeah. right yeah 
Um, but and it's kind of like an offshoot of that where it's like this group of people and they're all people who are either like in the Holocaust or whatever. They were, something happened in their life was destroyed by the Holocaust. In some yeah, way. there's like a Catholic nun. But she's um, not really Catholic. You find out she's actually right. was Jewish and her dad left her with the nuns. So she was raised that way. Her dad yeah. died the Holocaust. And there's like the actor who... I, I forgot like what his relate his mother or something was killed in the Holocaust or something. There's yeah. the couple with that uh the husband died in the first season. Carol Keith, oh, yeah. famous. Yep. Uh, their kid was taken away from them in the Holocaust. So like everyone has like a reason, you know. Yes. The main kid finds out his mother was grandmother that raised him was killed by a Nazi. Well, yeah. But so in season end of season one, there's this guy named Joe who's like this Asian person who like came from the internment camps that, you know, cause we had internment camps, a little uh, yep. known fact uh, in history, you know, while it may not have been as uh, brutal as the uh, concentration camps, but they were still pretty bad people. Yeah. Lost, I think George Takai their... grew up in one of those. What? I mean, you know, the guy who plays Sulu played Sulu yeah. on Star Trek. Yeah. I think he grew up in, in an internment yeah, camp. He did. Uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, it wasn't, I remember reading about it. It wasn't even just like, okay, we're going to put, put you guys in here because we don't trust you. It was like a way to like steal their wealth. And yeah. they were like, I mean, they lost everything. Like they, it, was it was similar to like how it was like a land Germans company. would take. What? It was similar to how Germans would take advantage of J- Jewish people. Yeah, just take Germany. all their artwork like, and possessions. Yeah. You know, you find out like, oh, that painting that's in your family. Well, guess what? Your great grandfather yeah. actually stole that <laughs> from a family. Right? Uh, it, it, yeah, their wealth, their everything, their positions in life were taken. Their land was taken. It's super fucked up. Like, yeah. um, so that's an interesting character in himself, and he gets like mind. He, he in the end of the season. Something happens and he gets like kidnapped and he ends up in Brazil. And that's when yep. you see Hitler, but you don't really get to see Hitler in full. So he gets like, it's interesting. He's like working with the Nazis in this season. It's like season, brainwashed or something. Yeah, he's completely yeah. brainwashed. They have to like break him. So season two, there's only two. Oh, the big stinger in the end of the season was, uh, what's his face? Jonah kills Dustin, uh, not Dustin Hoffman. Jonah kills the Al Pacino character. Al Pacino basically played the lead uh, like Nazi hunter, but you find mm-hmm. out spoilers. The big twist is that Al Pacino was actually a Nazi who pretended to be Jewish and went around hunting Nazis. And you got to so he's dead in the end of season one, but they work him into season two. And when they do it, is flashbacks. Yes, and you kind of learn like, yeah, it's good that he killed all these Nazis, but he was still pretty bad. Like he, you know, he's basically responsible for killing. Uh, the main what's the main character's name again? Jonah. He kills Jonah. Jonah's grandmother. He t- J- Al Pacino's character Colt. So there's like a toy store, and that's like the plot. There's a Nazi in the toy store, and they they find out who he is, and he's like exposed. And Al Pacino calls him, but he's like he's not really pretending to be the Jewish character that he pretends to be. He's more like he's, he's like giving the guy a lead, saying that this woman's going to report you because his grandmother figured out that al pacino was the wolf right this notorious nazi and she was gonna like expose him and that would have been it yeah it's weird it's kind of fucked up like the only way hitler got caught was because his grandmother was killed yeah because you know because jonah would never have been radicalized or i mean if that's what you're gonna call it and hunted all these nazis that would have led to the capture of hitler but i'm sure he also would have liked his grandmother to be alive but it's weird because the season two kind of ends with the beginning of season one. Like you understand the beginning of season one at the end of season two. You mean you like, realize that Meyer, that Al Pacino's character set into motion the killing of Jonah's grandmother, which really begins the series back in yeah. the opening episode of one. Yeah. Great. I don't think they in, they ever said that he had anything to do with his grandmother dying, right? In season one. No, you, it's a, it's unknown. It's more like just like he killed them because he was a fucking Nazi. Well, that was the the weird part is that the the grandmother died. She was killed. That's the catalyst. Yeah, 
and Joe and, and then Al Pacino Nazi. goes to Jonah afterwards and introduces himself. Yeah. So it's weird. Like Al Pacino basically had the grandmother killed and then introduces himself to Jonah and yep. sets Jonah basically on a hunt to go kill Al Pacino, which he does at the end of the yeah. first season. I mean, it's, it's like kind a of weird a, uh, Ouroboros, right? Yeah, it really is kind of like a cool puzzle box in that sense. Um, and, I will say, oh, go ahead. No, I just like that they worked in Al Pacino uh, into the series by yeah. showing like, and it correlates with what's going on in the episode. And um, It's a beautiful show. I mean, like, it if you like a 70s Quentin Tarantino reinterpretation type of vibe, yep. this show is really pretty to look at. It's really well done. It's definitely got like a mix of Inglorious Bastards yep. kind oh, of uh, gory. There, there's an opening, the opening scene or one of the opening scenes in the first episode of season two is Jennifer Jason Lee kills a guy. Yeah, she then, introduced to Jennifer Jason Lee, and you find out that she was kind of like, she's the sister of the grandmother, actually. Yeah. And I guess you were told that that sister was killed in the concentration camp or something like that. But she wasn't. You find and you find out that she spent the years like hunting Nazis. So she was kind of like running in tangent with yeah. mine, hunting Nazis, and she's just as brutal. She goes to like a the beginning i think it takes place years earlier like 72 she goes it's in like, the 70s yeah and she goes to like this candy store and she's talking to the guy and it goes like really nice and then she's like this isn't your candy store you you this was stolen from a family, yeah. like a jewish family and you took it from them yeah like and um, he finally admits it and yeah. she the next scene, his eyes she, out yeah i'm assuming he's dead but she, yeah his eyes were taken out um again it's just like it's theft of wealth theft yeah. of like life theft of like all these things it's oh yeah about, it's not just about exterminating a, a group you don't like but it's also about like stealing everything from them and yeah like the, sh the show does a pretty good job of that like i know some people argued that like you shouldn't and I, it, this isn't a bad argument, but like you shouldn't sensationalize the Holocaust, you know? Like, yeah, you like should. that is. I agree. I think you. I think if you're doing it the right way, I think. Well, like, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is I think it did it the right way. I think it's a tightrope. Like, you you don't want to sensationalize the Holocaust without a real theme there, and I think that theme of like a I, I always mispronounce this a diaspora, dis diaspora, where like. Yeah. You you lose diaspora. your diaspora. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. You lose your cultural heritage. You know, you you become kind of like, unmoored. I never really cared for the damn glorious bastards. I always thought it was like a little silly, like yeah. the fact that like this woman in a theater sets them all up and like the entire Nazi leadership is killed, and it's like a year before World War Two ended. Really, I think it was like forty four or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and I feel like it kind of like made it a little like this weird what if and he kind of did that again with uh that hollywood movie once upon a time in hollywood that's a great movie they say basically take on manson the manson people and sharon tate's not killed and by sharon tate not being killed it would actually i don't know if it's a positive or negative but like they said that like they use manson to basically kill the hippie movement and yeah like, I, I don't know well I'll say, well, like, the, the Inglorious Bastards seem to be, like, a comment about film and propaganda and stuff. Yeah. But but this this movie does a good job of showing, like... like it, the it all happened. The Holocaust yeah. happened. The only thing that they change is that, like, Hitler survived. And, you know, there's always been conspiracies for decades. That, yeah. Like, was Hitler killed? In, did Hitler kill himself in the bunker? Like, how do we fucking know? You know? Yeah. The fuck was? Uh, probably. Most likely. You know, well, his brain doesn't live on inside of a robot, yeah. as far as we know. I, I will say, like, I, I don't know that I would say this show is essential viewing, but like, I'm a little surprised it's not as more what, like, whenever I mention it to someone, no one's ever heard of the show. Like, no. that I, in regular life, I'm not talking about people that like genre film or, you know, like, 
me, you, like, there's some people that like this kind of thing, and, and maybe people don't, but, like, the average person, I don't think anyone's ever heard of this, you know? I think it's um, the problem with, like, streaming and having all the different channels and yeah. the exclusivity of streaming, that if you don't have Amazon Prime, you're never going to watch it. Like, if yeah. you just have, like, Netflix and maybe Hulu, and you don't have Amazon Prime. Right. And it's doubtful that you'll go find it on DVD if it ever gets released on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever. It's doubtful that you'll uh, you'll acquire it. I think uh, it's interesting how streaming works. It's like yeah, everything's there, but not a, but at the same time, there's a lot there's a lot of paywalls. So, so some people who don't want to spend more than like you know fifty bucks on bullshit uh, every month, there's yeah. things to watch. Also, I don't know. I didn't even know season two was even made. Like I felt like season one was promoted a bit and season two i didn't see any promotion for it right. at all. i mean this show they gave it one season i felt like you could tell they gave it one more season to complete the story but i feel like there's some story elements that they probably would have liked to have like like maybe given it like two more seasons like, yeah like there's like that young nazi guy in the first yep. season and you see him in the prison and i guess he got out in this season and his character i feel like gets lost because they have to like kind of hit the fast forward button yeah and get hitler and i feel like this guy who's playing in the background like he shows up here and there but i don't feel like he gets to like be as fleshed out um there's a couple other things there's like another character you're introduced to so you find out like jennifer jason lee's character like former boyfriend whatever is like a another like nazi hunter type thing yeah some, like nazis and stuff and he only gets like mentioned but this is um, so the last two episodes to me in the series are the best oh yeah the, the second to the last one is, is really well done. second to last episode almost works as like a great short film it would have uh, yeah it feels it takes like an place in like the mid four like early i don't know like 43 or something like that i don't know yeah and, i would say maybe even like 42 but yeah somewhere here, it's a how it's this interesting house with this old couple yep and they're very like eccentric in the way and the way it's shot it's like yes it feels very cinematic it's it's such a good episode and these nazis show up and they basically what they do is they you got to see this kind of like inglorious mm -hmm. bastards and it's not just made up and this is a real thing they would do there people come they were literally hunting jews and like well they people, people, people in the town right in the them in their attic or basement and they would come in and interrogate the people and say, like, hey, we heard rumblings that you're hiding people, you're hiding Jews. You're hiding you Jews. want a lot of food. You want more food. Yeah, than that was the people. thing. Like, you bought four goose or something. And she's yeah. like, I freeze them or whatever. And they're like, they just sound really odd. They're talking about, like, ghosts. And yeah. Like, okay, these people <laughs> are just very, they're like dementia brained or something. And uh, it's just such a good, you find out, no. There are people, they are hiding people. They're in the attic. And so the scene when the guy's telling a joke, because he looks at the camera, yeah. talking to an empty chair. He's not. He's talking to the kid and the family under the floor. Right. And he has all these traps set that kills like the Nazis. Someone it's online awesome. said it was like Home Alone. Like yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally like Home Alone. Like it's got like really a slapstick violent. element well, they, to it. They show a board game they're playing, and it's basically like almost like a homemade what's that board game? Rat trap or whatever, or mouse oh, trap. Oh, mouse catch, mouse, mouse trap. Yeah. It's almost like a like a more homemade mouse trap, but they're showing yeah. they're clearly playing with the kid below in the basement or whatever in the crawl space. Yeah. And one of the Nazis is in there while the other people are looking. The one guy who, it's funny, they show him come to the house. There's three Nazis that show up, and one of them sees like a snail, and you think he's going to like yeah. uh, do something, and he picks up and puts it in the grass. And he, he's like, okay, this is like a good natured person who just fell under the Nazis. Yeah. And he's talking to them, and he points out, like, I guess he's like a architect architect but like a not a good art like not a creative one or like to talk about that like he's like he's studied but he's not he's never gonna be able to make anything new or original but he points out he's like well your wall it's interesting your house is huge yeah the walls in the house make no sense that wall is why is that wall pushed out further and the old man's like oh it's just how it is it's like an illusion yeah yeah 
And no, it's like, no, there's like three feet of space where people don't walk behind the wall. <laughs> uh, they, you know, it, it's all set up for people to live in walls and attic. They like rig the whole house and they end up, whatever, they end up like killing all of them basically. Right. And then more Nazis show up. And the best is you see this one guy who's like playing the same role as that guy who was like the architecture guy. Mm-hmm. And you see him with the snail, except now they're showing you like, no, this guy's evil. He takes the snail and instead of like putting it to the side, he rips the snail out of its shell and like, yeah. kind of like laughs. So he's talking to the old people. And he's like, I really like your house. Yeah. And yeah. He, spoilers, he kills that family. I mean, he kills the, the old couple. Yeah. And I guess he, he, was like a famous, he was a famous architecture to like, the guys freak the fuck out. They're like, what are you doing? This is like an important person, you know? And the guy's like, I don't know. He just says something like how, you know, if you, if you go back empty handed, like they're going to like kill you or send you to prison or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whatever. He takes the house, brings his shitty wife and not his shitty Nazi wife and kid. <clears throat> yeah. And the people are still living there. And uh, that's when, like, they do, like, a Home Alone, and they take out that guy. And then more Nazis show up, and the kid eventually escapes. But it's such a good, like, even if you just watch, like, even if you don't even watch the show. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to watch the show. I highly recommend you watch episode seven. Is it seven or not? Seven. No. It's seven. There's eight episodes total, and this one's episode okay. seven. Episode seven of season two. It's just an amazing show. Yeah, it's really good. Because it it it's kind of like a it doesn't take place anywhere else. And the only big reveal is you find out that the kid that escapes the house in the end is this kid who is then older, you know, and that was like the ex-boyfriend or whatever of Jennifer Jason Lee. And yeah, goes up later because you know they they capture Hitler and they bring him to trial. He's the one who brings him in. I feel like again. The show probably wanted another season because they didn't get a chance to flesh this character out at all. Yeah, my guess is that they would have had Hitler go on trial and then escape and be him on the loose or would be... You just wouldn't get Hitler on trial until the end of season three or something. Yeah, something like you know that. I mean? yeah. It probably just would have been a lot more like game of chess going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And eventually Hitler would have been caught like halfway through season three or something and yeah. But yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, it's a whole bunch of things. Like, what's his name again? Jonah has like a girlfriend that he hides, like, yeah, wants Nazis, and she figures it out. And of course, she's like, first doesn't seem pretty cool with it, but in the end of the sh- end of the series, she's like pretty much hunting them with him. Yeah, the, it ends. I wouldn't say it ends on a cliffhanger, but it ends with you because he's basically Jonah's like, I'm done hunting Nazis, but he's but not. Then it, but he's not. He's always going to be looking for Nazis. And she's going to help him. Yeah. That's and it, the, it makes sense. I mean, because like... in just, on it now, because you see like an older man there and it's clearly a not, an ex-Nazi or something. Yeah. Or, or escape Nazi. And she's kind of like, do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> would help you. The They capture Hitler, played by Udo Kier. Yeah. And it's a court case. And it's brutal. I it guess is. both lawyers are Jewish, right? The black dude is supposed to be Jewish as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, There's two lawyers. One of them who defends has the defendant is like Jewish. I feel like he's playing. There's a famous, not Ron Kuby, but there's like another famous lawyer that I think he's like one of those like kind of like ACLU lawyers that like hmm. would take on cases that were either really heroic or they would look at like why are you defending this guy yeah um, i know who you're talking about I, I i gotta look this guy up i feel like that guy is supposed to be him pretty much like oh huh. could be i saw a documentary about this guy and i think he like defended like uh he, william kunstler that's oh, okay name. He died in 95, but I think he defended, like, the people who... I didn't realize he died that long ago. I thought it was, like, early 2000s. He defended, like, the first 
tower bombers like the first like yeah like really um, just some cases where it's like boo you know in other words like <laughs> and you know he he clearly wasn't happy on taking on the case of defending Hitler, especially being Jewish, but right. like, it's just such a, again, a powerful episode where they bring in people and like the fact that like Hitler's on trial, there's like some, like there's five judges and you find out the one main judge from like Germany is like a Nazi, was a Nazi youth or something. Yeah. So people were like a little cagey about that. Like, but he ends up obviously doing the right thing, <laughs> but yeah. You know, there's like it shows you like all the different people like around the world. Like, there's one from France, there's one from like, any countries that were like direct like countries, yeah, hit. yeah. And then of course you see like, well, there would be like riots outside. Of course, it's gonna be like Nazi sympathizers. Like the fact that yeah. he was alive, like what? <laughs> like, Udo Kier plays him. He's <laughs> great. Like I said, I've never seen Udo. Like Udo Kier is this weird actor. I guess he's famous for being like Andy Warhol stuff back in the day. Yeah, yeah, he was in like was it my private Idaho and like he's just like yeah his, he played like the mayor's. I thought um, he was just like a a John a junk yeah I that could be it. I think he was just a John for like you know uh, the gay male prostitute yeah uh, and he he's just one of those weird like he was in Blade he was in Iron Sky where he played the Nazi he just, yeah like, these like actors you see you're like ah oh, it's that guy okay and he always plays just like. Kind of plays like the same thing, like it's just like a uh, kind of a centric old older yes. man with crazy looking eyes. And I felt like with this, it's like I felt like he was like really Refocused. playing a character, yeah. <laughs> like where it's like, okay, I'm not looking at Udo Kier, like this is Hitler. Yeah, he and was really good at that. He played a really good. I thought he did a really good job with it, and like they put Hitler on the stand, and they even said like. uh was it Lena Olin? Who's the one who plays? Uh, she basically is playing um, Eva Braun. Eva Braun, yeah. I she's think it trying... is Lena Olin. I yeah, the whole her. season she's trying to get Hitler to basically make her like the new one in charge. Like, yeah, you know, like you're gonna die at some point. You're old as shit. Like, you, you need yeah, I need to be the leader of the party. Yeah, she was. She was like a couple weeks. She was like ten years younger than him, or something like that. Or, mm -hmm. I don't know, much younger than him. I guess you find out she was only like 17 or some shit. She was like super young when uh during World War II. Like ugh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, that was brutal. The court case. Yeah. It was so good. It was like and it was it done so well. You feel like Hitler's on trial. <laughs> yeah, it really you know, was. like one of those weird like reenactments or, or not yeah. reenactments it never happened, but like let's make a scenario where Hitler's in trial, but it's like done really well. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it was, the, the whole series was really good. Like I said, I mean, it's, uh, on one hand, I'm surprised it's not more popular or widely heard of, but on the other hand, it really isn't for everyone. I mean, it's, it's definitely Especially like a genre Nazi. show. <laughs> yeah. At some point you're going to get annoyed when like you lose. You're always the bad yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah um, like, what the not, not since not since Hogan's Heroes have I been so angry about us. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, Those lovable Nazi doofuses it, from Hogan's Hero. Yeah, it was, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. Um, it's, a, it's a really good show. It looks really good. It's very slick. It's shot well. I mean, Hogan? It, <laughs> Schultz was a, a nice addition to... Yeah. Was that the fat one? Yeah. <laughs> I see, Nazi. I see nothing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> what's his face? Hogan, or you find out years later was like yeah. weird porn and bizarre oh. sex crimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And good. the host from Family Feud was on there. Richard Dawson was on there. Oh, was he? He was he was a regular. He was like one of the heroes. Did he, one of did he kiss everyone like he did on no, Oh no. <laughs> um but yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I this is another show where um watch you, if you're gonna just check it out, you could watch episode seven of season two. And if you like it, go back and watch the whole thing. They're not going to be as good as that one episode. That one episode is really, really, really good. But um the show is what the show is. If you like that type of genre, that type of story, um, that aesthetic, then you're gonna you're gonna like the show. Uh 
I agree. Yeah. I walked out of the room for a second, so hopefully you said something that I actually agree with. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I was just saying that, you know, it's a really nice, sympathetic portrait of the Nazis. It really humanizes them. You know, you kind of feel like you can really... <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> Speaking um, of Nazis, real quick, yeah. before we move on. Um, there was this story, I think uh, it was... I'm trying to think of the, the reporter that put it out. I think Daily Beast put it out. Yeah. One of the famous, famous <laughs> one of the Nazis. Uh, oh, the Charlottesville one? Yeah. So I reposted it, but I screwed up and put the wrong Nazi. Yeah. Uh, it's so funny. There's people who are mad at me because I got the wrong Nazi and I didn't correct it, even though I did put out a tweet saying like, I got the wrong Nazi, but yeah. I said, my apologies to the family. <laughs> you know what I say? My apologies to the family of the Nazi in white for letting him think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess like one of the famous like Charlottesville, not from that fucking notorious photo. The a Tiki like, torch one, yeah. Tiki torches. There's that famous photo of like the one white guy screaming. They're kind of like focused, but there's a guy yeah. in the block behind him. That's the one who's dead. And right. He, he told me it's like a fucked up story. Like he was like running fentanyl. Good guy. Yeah. yeah. Right. He, but cheap he, too. Not doing, not charging enough. <laughs> right. He was, he was smuggling pills in from Mexico fentanyl Here, it's and like he we're, was, we don't need to it, you know and trump said like they're not bringing their best or whatever right i i don't think i think we got enough of the the worst i think we uh, have enough of the worst here like <laughs> he was only making like 200 bucks jesus christ he was only making 200 bucks on the deal anyway he got caught he was gonna go on trial it's kind of an open and shut case and he this is really, I mean, this is really sad. I mean, like, again, like I have kind of complicated feelings about the whole thing, but he was like some 30 year old dude. He was married. He had five kids all under the age of nine. And he went out into the snow and like shot himself in the head right in front of his garage. And then his wife found him. He was still alive and they called the paramedics and then he died. And it's just like, what a, what a, a waste, you know, like if you, if you kind of believe that like life has some sort of inherent value. It was probably like the, a fucking statistic. Probably came. Oh yeah. Who knows what his family upbringing was, but clearly easy prey to fall under Nazi bullshit. I just remember, like when I had a kid, like I used to be kind of a stereotypical jaded Gen Xer, like you know, like eh, I'm too cool for you know. But like then I had a kid, and you have a kid, and you like look at the kid. And you see how like awesome the world can be, or you know, like how cool life is, or whatever. And it like changes here. It changed me, you know. And I, I didn't, I wasn't a Nazi before or anything, but I like became an, a better version of myself. This guy had like five. <laughs> My kid had, like, made me not so Nazi. Well, this guy had five kids, and maybe that's why he became a Nazi. Like, five oh little God, kids. He's supposed to drive me nuts. You have five. Yeah, right. You have five <laughs> children and a wife. And you're out running fentanyl for 200 bucks you're fucking, and attending first of all, hate going rallies, to rallies, like Charlottesville, God. where Tiki Torch saying Jews not replace us. Like, what is? That? I mean, like, what? Yeah. Honey, you go to? Did you go to the job interview? Yeah. <laughs> Why? It was in front of a. Uh, Why a, do you smell like citronella? What do you smell yeah. like citronella? Yeah. Why was it at the Robert E. Lee statue that everybody wanted to take <laughs> down for decades and fucking? Yeah. it's just like it's just so sad like like again like look i i know that there's a lot to worry about like lamenting the loss of these horrible people isn't like real high up on the list but like it's real sad you know like these these people are like wasting their lives just being terrible like you know now this guy's dead and he's i don't know it's just sad it's it's uh it's real fucked up so I think it's really funny though because I posted this. I, I, you know, I posted it and again. I screwed up. Uh, I'm not a re fucking reporter, right. and not a. I don't have any fucking sources, and I shouldn't be too quick. But you know what? I think that this photo is more famous than the other guy in black. Oh this yeah, fucking chud screaming with his white polo, and this asshole. He's famous for like 
after that photo came out, he like lost his job or whatever. Yep. And, and so it was like, oh, that makes sense. This guy might be dead. I mean, who the fuck knows? So I wrote this Nazi schmuck in the photo is dead. That's the tweet. Yeah. And it's got almost 4,000 likes, which, you know, it's not too crazy, but it's been viewed 164,000 times. Yeah. Thanks to, it's funny back in, you know, before Elon Musk, that would, I would be the only one who would know that. Yeah. Right. Thanks to him putting that there. Now I know that like, well, one, an insane amount of people seen this more than liked it. It's been retweeted 227 times and 53 quotes. Retweets. I have people who are like generally pissed that I put the wrong Nazi. I wrote, and then I put a tweet after, and that one's got uh, 1,100, over 1,100 likes. It's been seen almost 20,000 times. And I said, it's actually the moron Nazi in black that is dead. My apologies <laughs> to the family of the Nazi in white for letting them think he's dead. And then people who are like, well, you have that other tweet pinned. I'm like, mm. yeah? So fucking what? Right. I don't fucking care. I don't care. Like, my apologies to the Nazi. Yeah. But like, new new tweets will not replace it. New tweets. <laughs> I'm leaving it pinned. Yeah. You know, <laughs> people are like generally pissed. I wrote something. Oh, this one person wrote, claims to be pro-life, dies anyway. And I wrote, <laughs> That's a great he's one. a pro-death. <laughs> <laughs> and around hence, I said claims to. And I was like. I liked it, so it's fine. But I just like some people are just oh Molly Conger was the one, and I don't know, she's the reporter, so she's probably just pissed at me because it's like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> because I got more views on mine with the misinformation. Oh, I'm sorry, the wrong Nazis dead, the wrong piece of shit that no one's heard of ever until you found out died. Uh yeah, is uh dead. I mean, my apologies to the Nazi uh from <laughs> I don't know where he's from, like Missouri. Or I something. like uh, Ashley Lintro. That's a damn shame. Well, what's for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I, that I, one guy wrote. Best part of this, this is the, the the correct person who died, but this guy wrote. Best part of this is he was getting four k in pesos or dollars to smuggle at minimum one point five million fifteen kilos and street value is hard to figure worth a fence. I'm not going to run that for less than twenty percent. <laughs> And there's one person who wanted to win for humanity. Yeah. Is- Juliet Jesk wrote, his last name even had Vaughn in it. I wonder if he added that. A lot of German Americans dropped the Vaughn and the surname during World War I and II to appear less German. It's a royalty <laughs> title. One of my friends growing up went from Von Osterhagen to just Osterhagen. I guarantee you that that motherfucker has no royalty. He had the Vaughn yeah. to exactly. the Nazi. Although that is true. I think in like some of the later issues, um, Dr. Doom just went by Vic Doom, uh, which he's trying to assimilate. Um, this one girl just got like genuinely pissed at me. And I was just like, yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah. I, I don't give a fuck. Like, what, what am I just like, <laughs> one, I'm not the Daily Beast or. Fuck if Fox News can spread fucking lies every goddamn day and make millions, billions while doing it. Well, and fucking... that tweet will eventually be true. I'm just gonna <laughs> yeah, I guess so. just... at some point I'll be dead. It might be next week, <laughs> 50 years from now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just hopefully I'll outlive him and I could say, I see, I told right. you. Right. Retweet it then. Retweet. And I'll pin it. I'll be like, oh, this one fucking this one guy who was an anti-Semite he ended up blocking me or he deleted mm-hmm. it. He wrote like something like, oh, it's interesting that you put like <laughs> schmuck next to Nazi, this poor man or something like, like this guy's just on this evil rich Jew and this poor working class man. And I wrote, Nazi was poor? What a weird thing to say. You know, <laughs> like the people are like, oh, found the Nazi. Mm. Um, you know, there's people who are like, who is it? Uh doctor photograph anger at me but i corrected it he's doing like the different texts and i'm like lord fucking cry about it i don't give a fuck i don't know mm-hmm. well people are you know what people are excited he's dead <laughs> even though it's not him <laughs> hey i did correct it it's not my fault that twitter's not showing it to you it's under if you look at the thread in line being like probably the highest 
my response be yeah probably the second highest in likes it should you should know that i corrected it i mean that would suck to be that guy though the the original guy because a people are are mistakenly saying that you're dead and b everyone's cheering like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, i mean i would like to not like when i go i would hope that people aren't cheering yeah for my death i would just but i also am not a, a nazi right but, <laughs> i don't know uh, all right so wait, the, the next story this is kind of the i guess we've already shifted into the the hard news oh um, yeah hard news there was a series okay so there's a series of ufo uh incidents no not like ufo like flying saucer but like you know it's kind of weird well, it kind of started with that balloon the chinese, chinese balloon. balloon yes the chinese balloon that we, we shot down the right wing yep. made like a big hoopaloo about it and took dumb pictures of them pointing the gun in the sky like morons yep and uh i don't know then all of a sudden like the story about the train derailment started coming <laughs> out and then I just see like all these like weird stories about UFOs being shot down. A bunch of them, one of them was like in Canada airspace or something. Yep. And then like, and then like other weird shit. I start people posting like really bizarre stuff, like an alien found like in Australia or some weird alien creature. Like it was lots of bullshit. I don't know people posting like meteor showers like as if we're getting invaded i'm just like there's so much bullshit on tiktok it's kind of hard to believe like some of these like like someone posted like oh there's a dementor in the sky (laughs) like there's this video i'm like watching i'm like okay that's just bullshit right right (laughs) well i I, it doesn't even look like a dementor yeah Um, (laughs) I would say that um, the, the simplest explanation seems like a reasonable one for, for, to me. And the, the what everyone is saying on the, the internet, like the, the, the science people are saying that, okay, so there's this Chinese balloon that was real big and it showed up on our radar and we shot it down. And then as a result of that, uh, they recalibrated their radar to look for smaller objects. They said previously they weren't looking for these things because the sky is actually littered with shit, you know? Yeah, there's I mean, like, I mean, they showed like how many satellites are go around the planet yeah. and everything. And like, there's like private satellites. There's like, um, you know, weather balloons. There's like research things that have just kind of drifted, you know, like p- people launch this shit and then they just lose track of it, you know? So that makes a lot of sense to me. It, it makes a lot of sense to me that, um, that once they started looking for stuff like this, recalibrated their their radar, they started seeing a ton of this shit. Now, the one weird thing is that a few instances have been like, well, this thing was a cylinder and we couldn't figure out how it was propelling itself. That sounds weird. But um isn't that like also problem is like ever since like fucking drones have like so many people have fucking yeah. drones now and they're so weird looking sometimes and People could put like all kinds of weird lightweight cast casings on top of a drone that yeah. could like a shape that like there's so many easy ways to like trick people now with just, yeah. just drones and they don't cost much, you know. And like, honestly, if you if you um shoot one of those things down with a missile, you probably are gonna have a little trouble figuring out what made it tick because you fucking shot it with a Hellfire missile. You know, I mean, like this is a fucking twenty dollar drone. That got it. Not much it got left, target. presumably. Like, I mean, I mean, that's like the funny thing too is like you see that. Like, I forgot I went to like some landmarks and they're like no drones allowed. Like, yeah, I don't know, it might have been like in uh, Garden of Gods in Colorado Springs. We'll go there sometimes. So, like, they have like an awesome trail. Mm-hmm. If you're ever out here, yeah, yeah. it's an amazing place to go to. Uh, but I think they have a thing that says like no drones. Like that's the problem. Like people bring them everywhere now. They bring them to yeah. like and the fucking camera on there. You can use that to spy on anything. Like oh yeah. That's like the joke. Remember like back in the day, like if you had like a video camera and you go to like a concert, they would like fucking kill you. Now the right. band is like it's like there's people just like you go to see a band now, everyone has their phone up and they're videotaping it, they're live yep. streaming it. It's like 
most bands are just like fuck you gonna do you know what are you gonna do i mean the only thing like some i know like some clubs i guess like that one club where uh not club stadium where dave Chappelle played and like you were supposed to like give your phone yeah, yeah. A bag or some shit but i guess that's how it leaks that's why there's not like a million videos of it because some people were able to sneak them in there's yeah i know there's some venues where they do a decent job policing that but i don't know man it's it, i think it, some bands though were like look we don't really have mtv anymore if you're gonna like show us on like tiktok and make us trend please do yeah you know yeah. like like i think it's like a different mentality now you know yeah well, you know, like you can't put our music out for free and it's like now it's just like oh we don't really have any access to anything anymore so please <laughs> please, please do, do. Maybe we'll get booked more shows well it is it is strange i think all these these ufo things um are probably real explainable but I, I would have thought that Biden would come out and talk about it. You know, I honestly, think a lot I, of it is bullshit. I really believe that a lot of this is generated bullshit to hide the fact because that oh, that Ohio train derailment. Oh explosion yeah, that we're going to talk about. Yep. Talk about now that happened like on February third or something like that. Yeah, like so long ago already. It was like ten days, more than ten days ago. And felt like that story was being hidden. Fuck, you showed me that thing, like Ohio, like they weren't even talking about. They were you sent me like an article or something, like a major newspaper in Ohio where it was like just focusing on some bullshit. Fucking the Columbus Dispatch. This it's like four days into this disaster, and the whole front page is like, is TikTok bad for your kids? And <laughs> The fucking then then I I googled I was like okay so Columbus Dispatch maybe maybe that's a bullshit newspaper I don't I don't live in Ohio so I googled like what's the biggest newspaper in Ohio and it was the Cleveland Plain Dealer that's the biggest newspaper in Ohio circulation wise I go on their website and they give you an actual PDF of the physical newspaper itself and there's not a mention of it except in the very bottom right corner of the front page it says what's up with the train derailment see page four. Are you fucking well, the, thing, like the right wing is trying to jump on this and use this as a way to attack Pete. Good Buttigieg. luck. I will say Pete Buttigieg, uh not doing a good job. It's fair to say that. I don't yeah, think sure. he, I don't think he's good at his job. Someone brought up a good point and said the kind of job that he has should not be run by a politician. There's certain yeah. positions in like, it cabinet, should be run by so a, like a technocrat or something. An actual yeah, yeah. person who like, you know, fuck. I know like people get pissed when like people in the industry get those jobs, but sometimes they're like fuck good at least maybe they actually right. understand it i mean usually it's more like you know trump put those type of people in there because the whole point was to destroy regulations and shit so they can fucking be polluters and stuff but i'm saying you want people who are actual like you know it's like obama <clears throat> put it in like an actual scientist into the epa you know well, like when i he heard started, yeah no i i i heard and i don't know if this is true that like mike dewine the republican governor of ohio has still not declared exactly in a federal disaster. Has right. not asked because for the feds to come in. The right wing's trying to attack Pete Buttigieg. They're trying to attack Biden. They're, right. and they're ignoring the simple fact that the governor of Ohio has to be the one that triggers FEMA to yeah. come to the state. The and feds he can't just doesn't march want to in. do that. The what? feds can't march in. That's the, the Republicans would freak if the feds just marched in whenever they felt like it. You right. Know, you, it the, is supposed to be triggered by that governor. So yes, you have to be invited into the pressure home. that fucking guy because clearly yeah. he doesn't give a shit. And they, you know, they're trying to like hide it because it's like it happened in a town of like five thousand people. The company, this is like the most fucked up part. A company that's worth like billions or whatever. Yeah. They gave the town. You want to hear this? They donated twenty five. Yeah, I saw this twenty five thousand dollars, and they, I think they ended up donating more. But it, 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 I'll tell you this in, in a sec. It gets even worse. And people are like, "Oh, twenty five thousand a person? I mean, that's not great, but like, that's pretty good." No, no, twenty five thousand. That's five dollars per person living there. It's like, oh, you can't drink the water, and you're probably already infected and dead. Like, there's people who. Like cows and chickens died like miles away from this explosion. I'll tell you, here's like, the th what was it like vinyl or some shit? It was like vinyl chloride or something. It's supposed to be like incredibly toxic. It like 
stays in the air. It's like in the water. It's in the Ohio River. They said now. it goes into the basements, actually. Yeah. It goes into the ground. And yeah. so they said people had to evacuate because, like, especially if you had a basement, your basement <clears> is like, um, you have them. You have the chemicals down there or some shit. Like, it's in the ground. Well, I'll tell you this. If you go on Zillow and look for homes for sale in Palestine, Ohio, you're going to start seeing some bargains, is what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> there, these people are are fucked six ways to Sunday. What do you mean? Like is... Ben Shapiro famously said, you know, if right. the, Just put your if the, yourself. in Florida, if the coast started to, you know, flood and stuff because of global warming. He said, "Just sell your houses." And are you going like, to sell it to Ben, the Toxic Avenger? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The top. He get it. exactly. Oh, that's the only one who's going to want to live there. Captain, yeah, the villains from Captain Planet. The, like, the... All the characters from Crimes of the Future. All the <laughs> he sucked ass. Um, well, it's it it is weird. We like, talked about that movie in a previous. Yeah, you know, it was good. It's, it's going to be worse than Flint. You know, and they said this is literally a mini Chernobyl. Yeah, it is. Lit- it is literally a mini Chernobyl. We don't know how what wide range this toxic cloud has. How yeah. far, like how many states or the state is it just going to affect the state of Ohio? Well, I guess the the one of the things I'm going to look, I'm not saying this is this is it, but this this is very possibly it that the Trump administration that there had previously been Obama had put in regulations saying that like Brake trains system. had to test their brake system yep. every so often. And Trump is in there and he's like, you know what? You'll need to test your brakes. <laughs> yeah, that costs that costs money. And I'm the deregulation guy. I don't want to have to test things. And shit like this happens. Like, look, you put horribly toxic chemicals on what's essentially like an iron tank and then launch it on a set of rails. I mean, like, fuck. This that, shit well, that's happens. the other thing that's fucked up about this whole thing is that. There was a train strike recently. Yeah. And the tactic, it wasn't just about, see, that's the thing people always, people, you know, union busters and stuff like that, they they do a good job of getting people to not go along with the unions because they do this whole thing of like, why should they get more when you're not getting more? And it's like, well, it should be the way where I'm like, I want them to get more and I should get more. Yeah, we should all I, get more. You know, that's how it's supposed yeah. to work. And The other thing they do is a lot of stuff that people don't realize why you need unions, why they're important, because it's not just about like, oh, so Bob the salt miner gets an extra buck and another day off from work. That's, I mean, yeah, good. I hope so. But that's not just it. It's supposed to be for making sure the job is safe. Yeah. Making sure the equipment is updated. Make sure you have workers that are properly trained. That's why they say you want to get union jobs sometimes. You, right. Especially when it comes to like construction or anything like that. You want union work. It's like, um, and they, I guess that was like one of the arguments with the whole train thing was, besides the fact that we're like, I don't get any fucking days off, you know, probably good to have some people or get a little bit of rest or yeah. whatever, you know, you probably want that. Uh, these things aren't automated, uh, and even if they were supposedly automated, they're not really automated. They still need right. to jack that shit. Uh, it's about like, hey, you know, this equipment's eroded. It just needs to be updated. If you, you know, they, I think they said like the joke is like this train company or whatever. If they updated the trains, you know how much they, you know how much money they would have lost if they up, actually updated the tracks. Mm, and make sure how much that didn't happen? Like two weeks of profit. Yeah, I mean. It's just it's it's, insane. They, it's so everything is so short sighted. I guess like you're telling me it's cheaper to have this happen than to like you know not <clears throat> ever happen. Yeah, they they just work on different metrics. I mean, like if they're if you're bringing ideas to the shareholders, the big boss or whatever, they don't they're not going to reward you for a plan that could potentially save you money in the future. If no. X, Y, or Z, they're going to reward you for saving them like $13. You yeah. know I mean? That's, that's what you, that's what about get that your, fiscal quarter. <clears throat> yeah. So I don't I know. Mean, that's, you, that's the problem with a lot of these things. You know, it's like, I don't, yeah. Like I, I wish 
uh, uh, honestly and absolutely the best for everyone there but like fuck ohio this maybe don't elect the worst people on the planet you know maybe yeah, like what was maybe this fucking, that fucking piece of shit jd vance when yeah. i talk to carlson and they're talking and they're just trying to like basically in the end of the day when you listen to them they're basically saying that like the train crash because of woke yeah like maybe when you <clears throat> next shit. time you have a complaint about how you know your your basement has turned into rubber toxic rubber then maybe complain to your MAGA mayor or your MAGA city council or your MAGA congressman or your MAGA senator and like fucking deal. You know I mean? Like you can't elect J.D. Vance and expect your life to suddenly have an uptick, you know? It's not going to happen. I, I cannot believe that guy won. I mean, gonna, everything about him is fake. And in the fact that like he is funded by the same, that he's funded by the same people who he claims he was going to go against when it comes to like uh, Oxycontin yeah. and all that. It's all funded by the, he's completely in bed with them. Like he's not going to do shit for your family. Yeah. I mean, your, your life will begin to get immeasurably worse. If you think nobody even knew where JD Vance was for the first three days of this, you know, no one had he any like idea. Responded and put out some bullshit. And it was just like, you don't give a fuck. He's out taking selfies of himself, pointing a rifle at the sky, making Chinese balloon jokes. Like, going on Tucker Carlson and complaining about things being woke. I'm so yeah. sick of that shit. You know, it's like, just say the fucking quiet part out loud and say, like, the train derailed because of gay people. <laughs> well, yeah. just, we know right. what you're saying. Like, they're going after, listen, PPH, like, I'm not going to defend this guy, but the, I'm going to say, like, let's say, you know, going after him because he's gay is probably not the right one. <laughs> That's not, yeah. I, I don't take you, I don't take you seriously. I'm not yeah. going to take you seriously. You don't give a fuck what happened out in Ohio. You just see like, oh, the guy is a transportation guy. Oh, he's that gay married guy. Like, right. Let's go attack him. And it's like, not attack him for like, maybe not doing his job right. Yeah. But it's, it's like, oh, if that was the case, why didn't attack him like a week ago? Oh, you needed a game plan? Um, it's terrible. Reliable source, Ben Garrison made a yeah. part of said it's Pete Buttigieg. I don't know if you saw this. Hmm. It's hysterical because it's like oh, the ass he gave him. <laughs> so look at the butt cleavage on yeah. that. Yeah. Weird. Okay, so it's you Ben Garrison. If anyone's ten familiar, minutes on that. <laughs> ben Gar- if you're familiar with Ben Garrison, he's this right wing cartoonist who makes like these awful like. He always sexualizes like Nancy Pelosi, yeah. AOC, super weird. It's all like he draws like Trump as like He Man and stuff. It's very funny. Yeah, uh, but it not in like funny. not in a like haha like laughing at him more. His comic is like it's peep usage, all the disasters that are supposedly that are going on, and him taking a broom and brushing it under the gay pride flag. And he says, let's concentrate on diversity, inclusion, equity. And he's got a gigantic fat ass. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so fucking weird. It's and that and it's like that's, I mean, he is the um, I don't know what the right word to use, but like he the bell ringer, is that the term? Uh, he's like a right wing bell ringer. Is that the term? Uh. Like he he just whatever argument the right is making, he just kind of just plops it all into one cartoon yeah this isn't like like this isn't some like oh ben at garrison is this extremist out of out of the ordinary no this is their argument right now yeah it's yeah. I, it, they should not be taken seriously like no i think pete Buttigieg needs to come out and say something and do his job right or he should resign if he can't do it or but, you should say like look i am urging mike dewine to ask for our help yeah we're please, ready. please call us in. We have we've been, we've been waiting. We've we called you like that day it happened. Yes. You know, we have. Like, don't let uh, this guy off the fucking hook. Like, right. I mean, this is the type of shit that like. You like, why doesn't Mike DeWine want FEMA there? Yeah, I like, would, I would say hiding? like we have trucks to help. We, we can bring in hazmat stuff. We have like educational materials for your for 
for the citizens who can't read, which I'm sure is a lot of you in Ohio, we can explain it with puppets as to what's going on. By, vi you know? by vinyl, what's it called? Vinyl what? <laughs> vinyl chloride or whatever. Is that good for you? Right. We, we well, have... It's basically like, from the scene, like the message Mike DeWine was, was pretty much like, yeah, go back home. You're fine. He, yeah, well, he you said, might not like, want to drink, you might not want to drink the water. That was it. Go home, but you might want to drink bottled water. <laughs> like, fuck. Like, the <laughs> air in my house is like toxic. It's not even just the water. It's like, yeah. no, the train company should be. So, supposedly now they upped it to like a million dollars, but like the joke is like it's still being organized by them. You don't know what the money was. Oh, how about this? How about the, the, whatever that train company is? I forget what it was. How about your CEO? Um, how about he moves his family to that town for a little bit? Yeah. You know, there's there. probably plenty no, of houses. Well, not just CEO, the top executives. It's, Everyone that sits uh, around yeah. that table. And their families. Yeah. Mike and, their families, is, and, and fuck it. Extended family, too. Bring yeah. all, bring the Mike, whole Mike DeWine, bring your grandkids down there. Hey, J.D. Yeah. Vance, why don't you move the fam to uh, East Palestine or whatever the place is? Yeah, if it's fine, it's, you're going to be yeah. fine. You Drink know? the water. So, yeah. Take a bath. Uh, see, see how that goes and that'll tell you how things are going in east palestine of course that, that will never happen now yeah. the funny the funny thing this isn't funny but the thing that's crazy is you know we hear about more tread train der derailments yeah the reality yeah reality is is that this shit happens all the time it does. because of this we're hearing more about it well this is particularly the photos out of this look like they were out of the chernobyl miniseries i mean yeah that's what a lot of people say they're saying this is like a literal mini chernobyl and the thing is that when chernobyl happened they didn't know how bad Chernobyl was going to be. I think they thought it was going to actually be worse. I remember as a kid going to like the supermarket, my mom was telling me like we might not be able to drink some milk for like six months. Yeah, I remember hearing that too. Yeah. Thankfully, like <clears throat> that cloud didn't like go over. Well, they were saying that with like when what was it, Fukushima or what there's a Japanese yeah. plant that melted down not yeah, long ago. Yeah, the after, Japanese uh, power plant. And uh mm. that was like in 2011 or 2012. Yeah, yeah that was bad. And they said hey. that like you really should not be eating any seafood. <laughs> Have I'm you been slipping. yeah right? Have you been have you heard people comment on how this is similar to white noise? I did hear people say some person said that it was crazy in the movie. They're like, oh, that movie was released like a month ago. I'm like, well, to be fair, it came out like over a month ago. Like a well, year and the, ago. the book was written like 30 years ago. Well, the uh, plot of it is you know, from watching the trail, I thought it was like a literal end of the world thing, but it's not. It's like there's like a toxic event, it's very yep. localized, it does affect people. But my God, like it it feels like when you watch that movie, you're like, at least like the government kind of handled it. And yeah, yeah it was people that were like sick. I'm like, this is like a fairy tale. In, in our fucking country in fucking shithole Ohio, <laughs> they don't give a fuck at all. No. You got a governor who's just like, hey, you might want to drink bottled water. Yeah. And honestly, Mike DeWine's not the worst Republican. I mean, no. he's like He's he's like well, maybe pretty, he could be maybe he is the worst because is. like you know you hear about it, no because like, you hear Greg Abbott and and Ron DeSantis and Ron DeMeeple and like you know they got big mouths they want to get attention yeah. like, wine, who knows he doesn't he doesn't get the attention because he's not uh, spicy enough like the meat like the meatball uh, <laughs> and uh, you know who knows he gets buried in the in the in thing but. In a way, that could make him worse because yeah. he gets to get away with it more. Well, I'll tell you this: this is a disaster. And here's here's I was talking to my dad about this morning. My dad was saying that like that part, and it's not just Ohio; it's like places outside of like Utica or whatever. I mean, like that that strip of Rust Belt, like even stretching into parts of Central New York, it's dotted with these little towns that are like. All on the brink, you know, Pennsylvania, Ohio, maybe Indiana. It's like decaying urban industrial infrastructure. Like, it's and... happened in a town where only like 5,000 people live, but like, I don't know, there's still neighboring towns with other thousands of people and yeah. there can be affected. They said, what they say, like cows and chickens from like 100 miles away drop dead all of a sudden. Yeah, I've not seen that like super verified, but I've seen like it verified that a lot of fish died and a lot of like birds in the area died. I mean, it's that's a, pretty apocalyptic. You brought up the white noise. So you saw that movie? I, I have not. I saw the first like half hour. I read the book, though. Oh, you got to finish it. It's a weird movie. It, it kind of goes in a different direction. 
I just love Adam Driver's performance in the movie. His voice is so fucking funny in that movie. Yeah. Like he's he's, he's I've come battling, to like him a lot. Uh, Don Cheadle, they're having like a a discussion battle and like Don Cheadle's like, I don't know, or is it Adam Driver's defending Hitler or something? Yeah, well, in the book, he's a professor of Hitler studies. Yeah. Like he's the only member of his department that's like devoted to studying Hitler. <laughs> Such a fucking <laughs> his voice in that movie so fucking it's like so weird he's like i can't even like put he's like I don't know what it is i, I don't know i can't hear it it's a it's a strange voice i'll it's check like, it out i'll I'll finish it up i i it's odd i don't i can't say it's good but the best part about that movie is the color study in a and p okay yeah i've heard i've heard people talk about that it is crazy the ombres the outfits that people wear working with the 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 stocks on yeah, like, yeah. stock shelves it is bananas like it, it's a work of art the movie i can't say much and let me tell you i grew up with amps yeah i i don't remember yeah. them being that pretty but i do remember the amp by my house did have you could get a copy of mine Kampf there i remember the only thing i remember with the amp we used to go to one in new jersey and they had <laughs> so fucking weird at the end of every um cash register you know the the little area where you used to bag the groceries and yeah everything. they had like are you talking about where they had like magazines and tabloids and shit they had a coffee a coffee grinder at this particular amp there's okay. a big machine you'd buy your coffee yeah, yeah. bagged and then you'd grind it after you bought it in the checkout lane so well I, like i said i always growing up you know like going to amp and seeing like they had a little book section and yeah a copy of mind conf and also a copy of like Jughead's Digest from March of Comics. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> little pocket Archie books. And yeah. And like they, they, on the Conf. flip side, they had like Betty and Veronica, right? Like, well, yeah, of course. I yeah, mean, yeah. Now, you know, you want Betty and Veronica. Right. <laughs> With the well, Mind Conf book. <laughs> like, yeah. that. like, it's so funny. Like, how crazy that shit was so accessible back then. Like it was yeah. not like the book section at AMP was huge, but they had my <laughs> It's like this is like uh, the early, like early mid 80s or whatever. It's just like like there's like maybe like 30 books there. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the Goonies adaptation book. <laughs> when I looked into it, I remember yeah. like photos and there was a picture of sloth. I didn't see the movie yet. And I was like, what the right. fuck is that? Dude. Guys, gonna storm the Capitol. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Where are> you guys, <laughs> Mega guys. Um, All right. Well, let, let, I guess we'll, we can move on to the uh, next thing. I put I I had uh, as a topic meatball run. Oh, um, before we move on, yeah. What do you think is gonna come out of this? I mean, do you think the wine will ever get pressure to like have FEMA come? I mean, I feel like this shit is, yeah. like, and it's fucked up that this story. I feel like the story is being buried. Because this is like total, this is like corporate, this is a result of corporate greed. Yeah. And I like, think I think this, this is terrorism. This isn't this is what makes Ohio people uh terrible is that I do think it's getting buried, and it probably is getting buried, and I hate to say it because it is some nondescript, decaying, mostly white little enclave that you know, time has kind of passed by and these people are going to take from this not necessarily any other lesson other than you know, we nobody cares about us because they're too woke or something like yeah, that. You yeah, know, that, well, that's, that's what, like I said, J.D. Vance yeah. and like Terry Carlson are pushing if that this, they, They'll be sitting there, if this were if this were downtown Detroit, oh, Biden would be here with his, you know, yeah. bags of money. Blue-haired, and, blue-haired wokesters. Yeah, and uh, and I think that's the lesson they're going to take from this. And the the real fact of the matter is, nothing's happening because they sold out to these fucking politicians that don't give a fuck about them. No, they, 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 no one's fighting for them. They do they, not. They do not report to their constituents. No, they, they report ask, to the people that paid for them to be there. Ask them to bring it up at their next town hall, and then it'll start to dawn on them that they've never had a town hall. Right. And that they never right. will have a town hall. Exactly. You know, I mean, now it's like, like uh, fucking Lauren Boebert. She doesn't answer to her district. No. And that, no. I, you saw that, right? The Adam Frisch. Yeah, yeah. Again. 
And he pointed out, he's like, listen, I lost by like 546 votes. We can do this. Like, yeah, he, well, he should, he should, he should be. And I even uh, put on his thing, like, look, the Colorado river's dried up. It's going to be a disaster for Western Colorado. It's going to probably gut the economy of like seven different States. Yep. Do you have, if you have any ideas, start talking about them. That's that's the kind of shit. Lauren Bober people... does it. She oh. she was on some like dumbass radio show where they asked her if she believed in climate change, and she made some st- like literally the most lamest joke ever. I believe in climate change. It changes four times a year. Yeah. Well, yuck, See, yuck. I mean that that's it's not and, a serious person. Yeah, and if if Adam Frisch gets in his truck or whatever he drives and drives around Western Colorado for the next year, and he talks to people. At like lunch counters or Denny's or uh, you know city hall, whatever, do, wherever people are, you talk to them and they'll listen to you. And you tell them like, look, you, your water bill is going up, or like you don't have, they don't, t- they turn off your water, you can't irrigate your crops anymore. Fucking, this is my plan for fixing it, and just talk to them about like nuts and bolts issues. The other that, person like, has no plan; she's just yeah. going around pushing nonsense. And if they say well, like, well, "What about trans kids?" Say, "I don't, I don't know, man." Like, do you got a lot of That's trans not kids your in problem. your school? That's not yeah. your problem. Like, it, well, it, you can even your you fucking business. You don't even have to take the moral high ground. You can just say, "Like, look, I, I don't see that as a. Is that a big problem here? Is that like is that affecting your water bill? Yeah, I mean, like, is like is, is the that... Colorado River uh, right? <laughs> I mean, disappearing because there's a trans kid trans that wants to kid play uh, baseball? all the water? <laughs> like, 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 you, yeah, like. I, I don't understand what, sir. Yeah, that's yeah. what I love, like the good liars, because you need those guys for that. Where they like those good, the good liars are so yeah, good. At, like, yeah. Well, you can I, even say like you don't even have to fight that battle. I know that's like kind of sh- squicky is to to not stand up for the right thing, but like you can just say like, look, if you're real worried about trans kids, you know maybe that's something we can talk about later on after we fix this existential threat to your life. Which is you won't have water tomorrow. Okay, I mean we we can shell exactly. the trans I mean, kids this debate. Is the, this is like the nonsense. That, and like I said, it's like you know that's Don't why fall I, for it. Don't I mean that's that's what Democrats do is that they then then you get Adam Frisch sitting in like fucking a town called like you know bloody bullet Colorado <laughs> and he's sitting in the cafeteria talking about how trans kids need dignity or whatever well fucking of course they do but that's that's not what you do in that situation you you redirect them and say like look i hear that you're worried about trans kids that sounds but like it's but maybe we fix this water thing instead you know because your cow out back weighs 90 pounds and smells like beef jerky because it hasn't had a drink of water in six months you know like <laughs> how about that like, the cow then gets up and is like what about those, bro, bro, <laughs> what about those <laughs> trans kids and he's and then after she's like you know what Fuck it. you get These like some are I, I heard about a a terrible incident in ohio a trans derailment and that's been all over <laughs> right just like the only right. one the, the, the train the tram derailed because of the train Tran, trans kids put vinyl pants everywhere in ohio that's what's killing the crops okay. yeah, yes what's that, that guy's name from the guy you see on snl that character yeah, yeah. That right. sure you got 30 percent of that right but let's let's but you're somehow 100 wrong <laughs> right that's how you fight those people like I, I don't know it seems real clear to me in my head i still I can't believe bobert won by now that i think about it, I'm like how did she even win by 546 votes it's like mm-hmm. but like i said i've been to grand junction not too long before the, like, yeah, there's some shit a month before the election there. and it was pretty rural it didn't shock me at one yeah bit. i mean there's there's like look in, in every in every everywhere you go there's going to be parts of that place that are filled with shitheads. You can't, um, you can't change them. Like yeah. they're self-destructive, you know. But you can't, you can. Like if you went in there as a Democrat, even and said, like, look, I, I'm not, I don't have any opinion about guns. Yeah, I'm not here to talk about gun control. It's not on my radar. I'm not even going to talk about trans kids or anything like that. Here, I am here to talk to you about 
um, water water management, land management, and maybe fixing some roads. They're it's, like, we don't need water. We have uh, <laughs> what's, what's that stuff called? We have, oh yeah, Brondo. We have Brondo. Brondo. We don't need water. Brondo. It's got electrolytes. electrolytes. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I think that would work. Honestly, I think that's the kind of thing. And, and I know I'm like clumsily transitioning here, but I think that's the kind of thing that would work against Meatball Ron. You know, like well, me <laughs> Ron to Meatball. So Ron DeSantis, who's doing a number to colleges or, or education mm-hmm. in Florida. Well, I don't know if we talked about this all the time, but like the fact that like these, if you put out like the, if you put out books that were not approved or something in these libraries, you can go to jail for like five years. Yeah. I mean, that's like some straight up fascist shit right there. It's bizarre. So pulling up, I think they, one of the reporters like, why was like a Roberto Clemente book pulled? Like, yeah. I, why? I've seen a bunch of books that there's a, a woman on TikTok that reads these books out loud. And there's one about a Jewish woman that made a traditional meal for everyone in their apartment yep, building. Yeah, I saw that. It was just yep. a kid's book, a nice little yeah. painted kid's book. And then there was one about um, a Native American family. And there was the controversial scene in there was that um, they said, you know, like, we live on stolen land or something. Because um, we do. Because <laughs> we do. Uh, I don't know. It's just like some. a lot of the books are just like, Oh, anyway, I I think and like Charlie Crist, I thought was a fine candidate. Nikki Freed probably would have been a better one in retrospect, but like, I you can't fight, you can't engage these people with culture wars. You know, you just can't. Like, now if you allow them, they're the one. The joke is they they scream culture war and then they try to say that the Democrats or the left, whatever, they're the ones that are pushing it, but it's not. It's the other way. It, 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 you know, it's like uh, Sarah Huckabee, uh, Huckabee's uh, rebuttal, pro rebuttal last week. Huckabee yeah. <laughs> uh, said that uh, they, this is the, they forced this war on us or something, a battle we didn't want to have. It's like, get the fuck out of here. And all these things, like there's, there's rules to deal with it. Like, okay, do you, do you think, do you think that a book has like irreparably harmed your child? Like, okay, a, fucking, okay, take care of it. Go. But it's also like it's like the same thing you were saying about like what Adam Frisch has to do to like combat uh, Bobert is that like all this stuff that Ron DeSantis is doing is just like look over here. Yeah. While I basically sell off all the land. Give away rights to land, you know, land, uh, give away, you know, deregulate everything, you know, give tax cuts to this, do this. All, you know, you focus on this dumb shit that you fucking morons are easily, you know, fooled by while I completely fuck you over for the next three decades. That should be the thing is if grandchildren are going to be affected by the shit I do. That if, if Ron DeSantis is, is chirping about, um like trans kids or bad books or whatever there the the opposing politician the democrat should be like look i don't i don't know what planet this guy's living on like no one i know has these problems the, the people i know are now paying ten thousand dollars a year for their property insurance yeah the people i know um you know are still getting like terrible cell phone service because the cell phone towers have not been repaired yet the people i know and you talk about like the fucking real nuts and bolts problems and you just you dismiss those other things you're like i i've yet to meet a real person i'm not talking about someone who's been bussed in from like you know another state to like cause hell at a, a school board meeting i've not met a person who's like been so bad at parenting that they can't help their kid navigate a library I don't know anyone like that. I don't know anyone whose kid who who can't like manage their own kids' reading habits. You know, I'm the, that's these are imaginary problems that Ron Meatball Ron is trying to solve. So now, wh- why are we calling him Meatball Ron? What happened? <laughs> Trump, we we've talked about this before. Trump. Well, we never talked about this one, but we have to. Okay, go ahead. Well, 
Trump, um, I guess, had been test driving some new nicknames because he had been going with Ron the Sanctimonious, which I'm like, come on, that to me is like up there with like Hillary Clinton's lame, like deplorable line. Yeah, you think? Which you I think, thought it was terrible, but all it did was make the right wingers that support Trump be like, yeah, hell yeah, we're deplorable. You think and the was, average chud is going to bother looking up what sanctimonious means? They're not. Okay? Sanctimonious. <laughs> and I remember hearing that. I was like, I don't know. That's kind of weak. Like, no. yeah, that's that's just seem like Trump. <laughs> and then he started floating. Like, what does that even mean to sanctimonious? Like, what is it's, that? Like, it's stupid because, like, it just means like holier than thou. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And like, I yeah, I, I mean, like know. that's it's not a, even like that a, insulting. It just wasn't a good insult, but maybe he was trying to like ease us in, you know. He's like, "Well, I can't well, get out the gate with the good one, you know. Get started, yeah. you know. I'll drop some little feelers." Like, I don't know, it's weird. He might be a groomer, you know. Look at these photos of him with these. Yes, teenagers. yep. And it actually is kind of funny because it's like, well, it's very funny. Um, that here's a guy, and the current, not just DeSantis, but the entire Republican Party. Like the past year, two years have been going on this whole anti-groomer thing. And by, you know, like, yeah, it's good. You should be anti-grooming. I mean, like, that's a good thing. But yeah. they're just using it as a way to attack the LGBTQ. Well, and the problem is that Republicans have been grooming kids in Florida for like a long time now. And no one fucking cares. Mick, uh, not Mick Foley. <laughs> Who is the guy? The, the, the congressman who got literally Mark arrested. Foley. Mark not, Foley. Not, not dude love or mankind. <laughs> yeah. Um, so <laughs> Mark Foley, uh, Matt yeah, Gates, ago, yeah. all, all these like Dennis, Republicans. Dennis Hasser. Yeah. Mark Foley worked for worked in line with Dennis Hasser. And he found out that guy was a Jim literal, Jordan. was a, even worse than Mark Foley. The, the groomer, the groomer line doesn't work. So Trump came out, and this is why Trump is as good as he is at stuff like this meatball ron is well, the funny thing about the groomer thing like i said is that okay you know ron DeSantis runs on this whole like anti-grooming thing claiming like disney and claiming the teachers are grooming their kids but well ron you're a groomer well you know? yeah like it... to me that's a big deal to bring up because it's like you know what's up with you like going to like you know, you're 23 and you're going to like high school kid parties. Oh yeah, there's them a alcohol. lot there. Like you're People... you're literally the guy. We just watched Daisy Confused, and mm. it's funny as I get older, man. Yeah, like, the Matthew the McConaughey. Was kind of, the Matthew McConaughey character was supposed to be kind of a bit of a creep. Like they make a joke saying, like, you know, that he's hanging out with them, right? And he's like, <laughs> the one guy's like, um, the one guy is like. Dude, that guy was like in senior when we were like in diapers. You know, it's like you don't know how he's probably like in his mid twenties. Yeah. But it's like I watch it now. I'm older. I'm like, man, this guy's a fucking creep. You know, yeah. he makes that line like, I get old, and I stay the same. <laughs> right. You know, like it is like now. I like I look at it more with like adult eyes. I'm just like, yeah, ew. Well, the I don't think the groomer line would have worked. But Meatball Ron, I don't think, is, I don't think, yeah, Meatball Ron is just uh, great because it's juvenile, so it's funny, and it's like hard. It's just a how are you going to come back from that? Right, yeah, that's the thing. Like, what's he going to put out? I mean, like, oh yeah, well, you're a, you're a if I, yeah, if he said like groomer Ron, Ron, then Ron, Ron, Ron DeSantis would be like, I signed these laws, and Mr. Trump, you were at this Epstein party, and blah, blah blah. But if you just, if Trump is just with this, and Trump's big stupid head just gets in there and says meatball ron and then ron <laughs> what is ron gonna do like oh, i am not meatball ron like <laughs> you're a yeah. pumpkin head <laughs> there's yeah, like, no he no doesn't have the first of all he doesn't have the ability to insult trump back no. because it won't sound it won't have the delivery it won't have yep. the edginess or the cadence it'll just be him because like i said i find it hysterical that ron DeSantis is supposed to be this this new gop wonder kid tough guy and all that stuff he has the same cadence and sound as mike bloomberg yeah you listen to the two of them they're not very different mike bloomberg, no. i was eating big gay ice cream 
you know, whatever. And, and it's just it's the same. Ron DeSantis shots was like that when he was asked about the groomer thing and everything. Ron DeSantis' response back is like, Republicans shouldn't smear each other. <laughs> Am well, I, and Trump will just be like, "You're you're a dumb, stupid meatball, meatball Ron." Meatball Ron, look at him bouncing around. Meatball Ron, look at him bobbing stupid his, little boots. He's bobbing around his little booties, <laughs> getting in his meatball. his meatball car, going down to. <laughs> you're a real like, hero, meatball. Yeah, I mean it's it's perfect. It, it is. I I think it's got the potential to really. Crater, I really do. He, he's dead. I he, think like, he somehow, DeSantis somehow survived, and Joe Biden just like they get the debate stage. And Joe Biden's like, whatever you say, meatball. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. It'd be over. It it's meatball over, over here. Want to raise your taxes, mm-hmm. meatball? <laughs> you know they're trying to say like, oh, this is racist against. <laughs> Ron DeSantis because he's Italian. And I'm like, I just want to make a point that meatballs are not just Italian. There's a thing called Swedish meatballs. I would just like to make a point that that sounds like critical race theory. Yeah. Are you talking- well, trying to push some woke? What are you, woke? Right. Yeah, exactly. Is this some CRT shit? It sounds like, sounds like you are getting a little woke. And Wait, that maybe oh, you, is- you want to go dye your hair blue? Yeah. You want to get, do you need a safe space? Meatball Ron wants to lecture you about racism. He's like, Meatball Ron over here, you know, he, he said that it's a, that's racist and that's weird. I, you know, I thought he was anti CRT. I right. thought he was a bad thing, but thought like, he was. really, you know, not when it comes to Meatball Ron. <laughs> so it is, it is. I'm the Meatball. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm. Yeah, Meatball is not a good name. I would love. I mean, it's funny, but like, I if you're like a guy who's trying to be a serious candidate for presidency, you don't want to be called meatball. It meatball. is so dismissive because it's it is like so it, it implies that you are round, <laughs> dumb, and short, sloppy. Yep. Simple. <laughs> Sluggish water. I posted that picture you made of me yeah. on bed on Ron Sands' body with the, the boots. boots. And some people got mad at me, like, how dare you do that to me? I'm like, just shut the fuck up. I'm like, that's me <laughs> cousin. Ron's the people. It is, yeah, it's great. Um, I'm I love that some people have like no sense of humor. They're just like, that's yeah. a meat wad, that's a wad of meat. I'm like, <laughs> like shut up. Like, mm. seriously, like, really. Yeah, this is funny. <laughs> meat, why, if my, meat wants a lot of meat. Why does he look like a meatball? Yeah, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. You can't tell me that that's not a meatball. Then what the fuck is a meatball? Meatwad? <laughs> what? what, what <laughs> like, All what right. Is, well, we got. Well, hold we, on. Like, like we, I know. So, I mean, <laughs> like that'd be really fucking funny if, like, the. The camp, Ron DeSantis campaign died two days ago. The day Ron called him Jimmy Buck. I think I would love, man, if, if there's video of Trump using that line, I would love to see it. Because I, the, the, <laughs> Just Ron to Meatball, knowing that knowing that Trump has said Ron to Meatball or Meatball Ron is hilarious. But like, if I could just see it with Trump's like, voice, that, like, oh. too, if they try to, if DeSantis tries to claim it's racist against Italians, and it's like, dude, you know what? You you proved Black History. Yeah, I mean, like, you have no right to complain about racism. What? Is, yeah, what is the CR? You're trying to push CRT on us? Yeah. Uh, you know what? That'd be so typical. Of yeah. Him. That'd be t- I knew people like that. I knew people who were like. Oh, so fucking anti-Semitic! Is it? But if you say anything about them being Irish, they'd be like, "Yeah, so fucking mine." They were so sensitive. Right. Yeah. They'd say all the racist shit in the world. And all of a sudden, you're I, acting like someone's going after your lucky charms. You know, like it's <laughs> exactly. Yeah, or, or your Guinness, <laughs> your green hearts, yellow moons, purple stars. <laughs> well, you know, you're fucking <laughs> Kathleen, and you're like. <laughs> My brother's dead, but I don't give a fuck about anyone else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, oh. Ron, Ron de Meepo. <laughs> no, Ron de Meepo. Um, he had some. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, we'll just move on. I, I hope that this is not the end of Ron de Meepo. 
Mm, it better not be. I, I think. I feel like I, that has to stick. Oh, yeah. It's funny. And I feel like I feel like there's other things that you can do that would like meatball. You could say other things about him. Me, like there's got to be something else funnier. But oh, I yeah, think, that might just be it. You know, I, like, I little, look if there's something funnier than Meatball Ron. I'm not even sure I want to hear it. Little know? Marco, <laughs> little Marco, like Trump destroyed Marco Rubio. He like he trounced him just by calling yeah. little Marco. Yeah, he is a little guy. Um, well, I can yeah. say, I just, I, and I'll say this real quick before we move on. I want Trump to destroy DeSantis because DeSantis, and I said this in the last podcast, I'll say it real quick, and why it's important that DeSantis gets destroyed. Because the media, the right wing, the Republicans, the media, the right wing, Repo- and, and even just regular mainstream media will embrace DeSantis as if he is some moderate normal yeah yeah candidate with a young family and he has good intentions when we all know he's shit and he's probably worse than trump i want trump to be the candidate because he is toxic as shit and oh yeah you're not gonna have him go on jimmy fallon and jimmy fallon rubs his hair again that's not happening right no like no i don't think it's good for the country for him to run but i also think it'll be worse for the country in the long run if if ron DeSantis swims yeah yes I think yeah. they, I, I I do not want the Republicans to get a free pass. They don't get to have a normal no. election. No, you have to support your nut job that you refuse to impeach, right. and you're stuck with him. He he, you are him, and he is you. Yeah. All Maybe right. Dead. All right. Speaking of, uh, you know, because talk about and again, why I want Trump to be the nominee because of January yep. six, and this is a good segue. Talk <laughs> about our favorite Twitch streamer. Uh, uh, <laughs> Our favorite uh, cosplayer and attendee of uh, Renaissance fairs. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right. I forgot about that. Riley, Riley Williams. Williams. Uh, well, she gets sentenced tomorrow. What is she? Or today, for? I suppose. I hope yeah. she gets sentenced for fucking, would they say seven years? They're seven at? years. She, she, That's being kind. Yeah. She was out on her own recognizance and then she went to court and they found her guilty. And the judge is like, you know, I think you might run, so we're gonna we're gonna keep you because usually you get out, you can stay free after being convicted to settle your affairs, and then you report to prison. That's usually how it works. But the judge didn't let her, and she was stunned. She was really surprised and angry that she, they she got put right into prison. Um, but what she finds out. For? Uh, she stole Nancy Pelosi's laptop and tried to sell it to Russia, and I you believe. can see. It's all there. We saw that we there's video evidence of her literally grabbing the laptop. We could yeah. all see it because she was there. And I don't know if she personally stole the laptop. I think someone handed it to her. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. But you're right. she had every intention of getting everything off of there, selling it to Russia. Um, she's a literal Nazi too. Like that's yeah. not just like a hyperbole here and everything. I mean, like, you know, she's a fucking Nazi. Like, there's proof of it. Yeah, she's she's an odd one. She's real young, um, real crazy, and it's like I I always get the feeling there's more her. to the story. <laughs> what? I could fix her. <laughs> she just needs someone. Um, she she I, I get the feeling that there's more to the story. I don't know what more to the story is, but she, it wouldn't surprise me if she was like in that talent agency. Yeah, I think like, she like, up i think she's in the same fucking town agency that like marjorie taylor green's in yeah. Mads and Corthorn. there's like, so what is this talent agency God. it's like the fucking law firm from angel <laughs> it is like <laughs> the injustice of, league or something it's, it's like the fucking legion of doom yeah. wait why is brainiac and solomon <laughs> grundy in charge of this yes, Solomon Grundy. i was it, it is. door by fucking sinestro <laughs> it is it's so sinister. Like there is something super weird, and I it something. Oh, I I feel like in fifty years we're gonna there's gonna be like a Wikipedia article that explains it all. Um, it's like but, yeah. I wish someone would make like they gotta find. I want. I gotta look up this talent agency real quick. It's like um, something talent like 
in insight talent insight. Robert and Marjorie Tyler Green come from. Yeah, it's something talent agency. It's like two. Explore talent. Exploit. That's it. Yes. So someone posted this was I found this tweet from three twenty three one twenty two. Just said from Sandy Bacham. Just remember Lauren Bober and Marjorie Taylor Green are both failed explore talent actresses. In other words, they're GOP ops. And yeah. like all of them are. I mean, they're just like a waste of time. I mean, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if like in like, I mean, fuck, even like uh what's his face? The Ohio guy. Um uh, which Jim is LG. Oh, JD, JD. Like, Bams. he's a fucking product. He's not a yeah. fucking real politician. It's like a joke. It's like, um, yeah, I think she, that girl comes from that. I hope she fucking gets the full, I mean, I think seven years, yeah. Behind. I mean, like, isn't that shit like espionage or something? I mean, like, it the is, fuck? yeah. Um, and she was pretty belligerent, and she, I don't know, she, I guess she, that's the judge said, I listened to some of the judge's sentencing, the judge said that, like, everywhere Riley Williams went that day, she accelerated the violence. She prompted people to, she kept telling people to go in, she kept yep. pr- encouraging other people to break the law. It's like, everywhere she went, she made things worse. She was she like was one like, of those, basically one of the organizers, or leaders. She was like Stitch, I think the judge said. Uh, Stitch, or, the, the lovable alien from the Yes. Country. She, the judge called her the Ezra Miller of j Sixers. <laughs> she was <laughs> she, okay, no, 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 I made up the last two things, but the judge oh, did, did say, you? I thought the judge really said that. I did. I thought he was going to be like, you know, he just go, he just pulls out the mic and he's like, <laughs> just starts going riffing. And he's like, <laughs> not since Stitch from <laughs> He's like a Lisa Loeb was a Nazi. <laughs> no, the, yeah, right. The, but no, the judge did say, she said um, that, that wherever this woman went, uh she acted as an accelerant and i think that's true i think that's that is why <laughs> she's like a literal fucking kerosene like, I, yeah she wasn't just like a participant she was yeah. a literal like yeah you made it worse you made everything worse because there were some people j sixers that showed up and were terrible but then like towards the end they were like okay i don't feel good about you know there were some people what like am I doing that, here yeah, and they got like thirty days suspended or whatever. You know, that's fine. I don't, whatever. But like this, this one. I saw that one fucking guy. Remember that guy who was like a. He was either running for state senator or he was a state senator. Oh yeah, president. the guy from West Virginia. His, his grandmother like said he was an idiot. And yeah. Like, he's like, I like to personally thank Trump because my son's mm. a grandson's an idiot. Right. Yeah. Uh, that guy was like running again or some shit. Morons. Hmm. All right, so um, the next we'll find out about that tomorrow. The next the next thing we have is, and I don't, I almost didn't include this, and I don't I don't know if I have a ton to say about it, but the Michigan State shooting, uh, there's a, a shooting, um, last night, uh, or uh, the night before in Michigan State, and then yes, uh, yesterday I think there was one in El Paso, uh, or today. There's one in California. Anyway, the long this story shoot, short, it's a, it, they're shooting all the fucking time. So that's that was I, I read this on Twitter, and I forget the guy who said it, but he said, um, "We are statistically likely to have another mass shooting tomorrow," and he said that's always going to be the case in the United States. Is we are statistically right. likely it, to have it a mass is shooting. not it is not out of the ordinary for a mass shooting to happen. Yeah. What might be is out of ordinary is when it's like fifty, and even then it's like. How is that not even common at this point? I mean, like, the fucked up thing is, like, when Columbine happened, what was it, like, 19 or 18 were killed? Mm -hmm. It was, like, astounding. It was, like, nothing. Like, what? Now that's, like, they might not even go report it, you know? I I think there may be some skewedness to these statistics. Like, I don't know how often things were were reported as a mass shooting. And I – and – Clearly, there's a different. I mean, like, look, I know there's. It's still a shooting. I, 
Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, if it's one person getting killed, it's bad. Right, but there's a difference between like <laughs> a a botched Circle K robbery and a shooting in a movie theater. Those are two different things. You know, I mean, I know the end result is the same, but like, like if you're in a if you're in a Circle K at midnight and there's a robbery, that's not like a super unexpected event. You know, that's that's yeah. You should go there like almost expecting that there's a good chance that might happen. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it's like you you should have a heightened awareness of your surroundings if you're in a gas station at midnight. You know, that's that's yeah. true-ish. Um, um, what was I going to say? Okay, so the reason why I want to talk about those is because I saw a TikTok of this woman, young woman talking about basically how she was in Michigan. She goes to Michigan State, and I don't, she said she, like, she wasn't an actual, actual shooting, but, you know, fuck, it's in the same area. I think she dorms there or something. Yeah. She is a Sandy Hook survivor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. She talks about how she has like permanent injuries that were brought out by literally like PTSD of being like crouched and hiding as a small child at Sandy Hook. Yeah. And it's just, you know, I saw that and it's just like totally fucked with me because I'm just like, you know, you get these scumbag bastards like Alex, uh, Alex Jones who mm. just like yeah. spread all these lies. And it's like, here's this girl and she has to like, like, yeah, at such a young age, the fact that she's alive. You know, well, those motherfuckers saying that it wasn't real and it didn't happen. You have to like, she probably has to deal with so many douchebags at school. Probably that's going to be up. And yeah, because you know, I guarantee they moved, obviously. And it's just like, and then you're at the school, and then it happens again. And it's obviously not the same. But like, she even said, like she like tense, she like her whole injury like came back pretty much. It's fucked up. Like, it's yeah. to the point where, like you said, like, it's going to become a statistic that any of us could be witness, be a part of, fortunately, be the victim of a mass shooting in our lifetime. And now it's going to get to the point where it'll be multiple times. Yeah. I mean, like, you can't live like this. It's going to get to the point where we as a society cannot function. And, and it... Like you said, yeah, the on again, off again robberies that have happened since like during time of like at gas stations or anything like that. Yeah, that, that's an unfortunate thing, and those are easy targets. But like you said, movie theaters, a big Different. supermarket, a big Different. you know, a mall, a store, a concert. Like, well, and where there's no goal, like a a Circle K robbery, they want money. Yeah, you know, and I that's mean, pretty much it, Slim Jims. Presumably, that, that a Circle K robbery has the potential of going reasonably well. You give them whatever they want, and they go and they run way, away. You know? No one gets hurt. Yeah, I mean, like, but that's... the ones that are at these places, the the person that's doing this is not looking to get a bag yeah. of money, or they don't want anything. They're not they there. Just... They're, they're like on a weird suicide mission. They're there. Or they're there to kill minorities or they kill, you know, women or they have a specific target and they just happen to take out a whole bunch yeah. of other people in the process. And, it, you know, it's just like, again, it, it, it's it's Groundhog's Day. We talk, well, it keeps hmm. happening, we keep talking about it, walks around in circles. But like I said, once in a while, you see something like, you know, like that young woman talking about with being there at Sandy Hook. And with all the shit, the baggage behind that and having to be the victim of that. And then you're going to fucking school and it's like, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You know what I mean? Like, how well, can you if we're to the life? point, yeah, we're, if we're to the point where some people have experienced two school shootings, then That's we're, the eventually, we're eventually going to get to the point where many people have experienced one. And maybe that's when it changes. Maybe when all these people are a little we, older. You know, I just don't believe it. I, I mean, as long you know, when you have it's, politicians like Lauren Boebert, Mike DeWine, uh, JD. I'm Dan, not. Yeah, I'm not talking about in the Tom next Dimitro. 10, 15 years. I'm talking oh, about like 20 but years from now. I feel like when it becomes to the point where it's so out of control, there'll be nothing they can do about it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No. It's, yeah. It. It's like if it doesn't get fixed now. It'll never be fixed. It'll be. It'll just get worse. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I don't even know the details of the Michigan thing. I just I saw that thing with that girl, and it's just like it's just symbolically fucked up. 
It is. You know, it's it a, and it's funny too because like not funny. I don't know why I'm using that word, but like it's interesting that like when you think of Sandy Hook, you just think like everyone died that day. Like you don't realize there were actual survivors. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. You're, because you, you feel like they died that day, and then if you if you're unfortunately aware of all the bullshit lies that were spread by terrible people, you, you know, oh, they're all actors. So, so this girl's a crisis act. I mean, it's fun. It's just like it, it never, it never ends. It is literal groundhog day. Yeah, you know. Next week mm. we'll be talking about another mass shooting. Right. Yeah. Speaking of shitty, uh, <laughs> yeah, this what... about. You know, real quick, I want to talk about this real fast. I saw a thing where like Marge Taylor Green's constantly every day, like oh, like she has it in so hard for AOC, like she wants. Yeah. To- She's trying to like debate her. She's like, AOC won't debate me. And I'm like, I think it's like really funny because I'm like, she why would she debate you? It wouldn't even be a debate. Yeah. Would she it's like a- debating a garbage can. What are yeah. you like convince <laughs> like the garbage can cat. or something? Right. Like what the, we we don't yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Well, well this- I said like, why would AOC prop you up? Yeah. You're not, You're not- a serious person. Hey, look, you know what? We were nervous about, uh, you know, Carrie Lake and Katie Hobbs. Katie Hobbs said, I'm not going to debate her. Yeah. What happened? She won. <clears throat> that was, well, it turned out to be a really smart. I remember even saying that. I was like, well, if she wins, it'll turn out to be a smart decision. And if she loses, it'll be a bad one. But she won. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it works. With, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, if if she lost, if Katie Hobbs had wind up losing, that would have been the first thing I would have thought of is, like, you should have debated. Yeah, but like since she won, then clearly not debating her fucking didn't hurt you. No, because it probably again it would have been a complete waste of time. It's like you're running on real things, and your candidate is literally running on just like January six lies, or January you know twenty twenty lies, claiming that they're not even gonna fucking accept their loss, which she still hasn't. So yeah, well, I guess this kind of this actually does dovetail into the last item, and I've already talked a little bit about my like trans uh thoughts when we were talking about adam frisch and everything i i always get torn between feeling like some sort of moral obligation to debate the trans point you know to like defend these people because well go ahead Uh, yeah well i get torn because like i know morally and ethically you have to defend the cause but i also know that like you may have a better result in refusing to debate the issue by saying like, this is not a problem. These people are just living that I'm not debating. this because It's not a problem. That. You can do that both at the same time. You can defend. That's the, that's the thing. Say, this is not a debate. Like this person's existence is not. Right. That's you are being I, disingenuous. I, I guess that's how you say it. I'm, this is an open to debate. Trans people exist. They deserve to live their lives they're not affecting not you it. they're not telling yeah. you to go get uh go become trans if, if, right. if, if they are it, no if you think they are maybe that's something you need to look yeah. in on yourself maybe you have some issues maybe you have uh some thoughts that need to be like yeah. you know these a lot of these most of these trans people go through years if not decades of therapy before they even do any type of transitioning nobody I, yeah Maybe you need to do a little bit of that to see, like, hey, maybe right. it's been bugging you so much. Maybe there's something there. Maybe yeah. you don't go want see to a be. psychiatrist, fucking yeah. weirdo. Like, like I don't. Yeah, go don't see a psychologist or something. Like, go, like, leave this fucking person alone. Let them fucking exist. But I mean, the other thing too is it's not even like what we really know what's going on. Like you said, it's like the right wing and everything is. They don't have anything to run on. They have no issues really and all they can do is run on the fear of the other and the one thing they've been able to do which is it's weird on a national level this shit doesn't work we saw it in 2022 yeah not when big congress they barely won they lost a lot of elections a lot of local elections they lost governorships and uh you know lost state houses because they decided on a national level to run on an anti-trans thing now unfortunately it does work in some of these states and i guess the one of the big ones was in arkansas and that's where I yeah. this up. there's this um let me look them up real quick 
And it's so fucking gross. This was in Arkansas. Arkansas put in, and it's not just Arkansas. It's all these other states. They want to put in yep. things that are basically going to prevent people from getting therapy, from getting consultations, from having like hormone blockers or anything. Any, any aid. Aid, yeah. help aid, education. Education is probably the biggest part. Deny all that for anyone who's like, I'm in the wrong body. You know, I've known this since I was five. Yeah. You know, not, not me, but this person. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, and <laughs> um, it, they don't want, they want to make sure that doesn't happen. They don't want that knowledge. They like, they, you know, it's like, so let me see if I can find this guy. Mike, is it Mike Keck? Or is it? Arkansas. Let me see. Arkansas trans. So let's look that up and see. Arkansas has introduced a bill that would criminalize trans people from using the yeah consistent with their gender identity. It's like, first of all, what do you gonna do? You get a you get to check their genitals before they go in. So weird. you know how many morons I could see like that will like question. Like not every woman looks like Pamela Anderson. You're gonna yeah. like question their femininity. Like what a fucking creep. Like these people are fucking sick. And I think like women need to realize too that like an attack on trans women is an attack on all women because you're next. <laughs> like they're... well, it is, and it's just so it's just so strange. I mean, like I think Arkansas or I can't maybe it was Missouri or something. One of those. um state houses they they just voted again to have like a different dress code for women like women had to wear yeah. dresses and stuff uh, yeah like it's the, you're right it doesn't stop it, it never it's stops woman's like yeah you can't wear like shoulder exposed it's like so stupid so okay. I don't know. arkansas state senator mac mckee asked a trans person at a legislative hearing do you have a penis so this woman was talking she's trans and Matt McKee says, do you have a penis? And she's like, that's gross. Like, and people were booing him. I kind of wish she responded with, do you? Yeah. But whatever, we can't all have a awesome soundbite that would totally crush that guy. Because I imagine that would bother him more yeah. than it would bother her. Now, it is gross. Like, what does that have to do with anything? It's well, she, funny. and I wouldn't have just left it there. Like, do you have a penis? Do you, do you have both testicles? Yeah. What, are you, what, what is you your... Mean? Wait, are you interested? You want to go on a yeah. date? Like, I mean, is it like right? I mean, like, well, just maybe that's something. In, like, why do you need to know that? Is that into like, the nuts and bolts of it? Like, are you what's, what's your, your testosterone level? Research? What? Yeah, what's your testosterone level? Yeah, you know? yeah. Is your I notice your Viagra? voice is like yeah, like all that kind of stuff. Like these are things we should know. You know, I yeah, mean, like, are you on? Are you taking like protein supplements? Yeah. To, like, are you sterile? Have you? Yeah. Do, you do your sperm you still work? get it up? Yeah, I mean, like hey we're talking you know you i guess what information on my genitals i mean I'm... yeah and then of course she's she said something like that and he's like this is all that's you made it all about this and it's like again it's like she didn't do anything you're just a creep yeah and you get away with it because you're in a republican controlled house in fucking Huckabee state and it's like this poor woman has to deal with the shit and like i said this is an attack on all women. Like, you know, there's some women who just despise trans people and they have. It's an attack on the dignity eight. of people. It's it's a, it's, yeah, exactly. Like, this is just like, and again, it's so targeted against a specific group. Like, yeah. like it, it's like, I was just about bullying. And like I said, one of the crazier ones I saw, I saw some at this hearing and some of them were good. And then was like, yeah, yeah and this one guy who, who is a Democrat? And he said all these like really good things about like just like, dignity, you know, having dignity and like I, I don't know the clip, but then I saw this insane one from this like right old right wing asshole, mm -hmm. and this is this is the argument they're making. This is they gen I guarantee you that among right wing circles they all believe this shit. He said because he didn't make this shit up. This is mm -hmm. fucking handed down him by whoever whatever anus that they pulled this right wing script yeah. out of the pig anus uh, he said that tiktok is uh, yeah. chinese communist chinese tiktok 
is taking our kids in America and making them chop off their their gen, you know, mutilate their genitals yeah. so they could be trans. And it's the most insane thing. But I'm like, I guarantee you that like that shit would come out of Marjorie Taylor Greene's mouth in a second. Oh yeah. And it would come yeah. out of, like your average QAnon nut and everything. And mm-hmm. it's just like, and I'd say this one that's so fucking stupid. It's a stupid thing to say. Well, because it is a stupid thing to say. But the other thing is like, okay, so if you have this kid, or well, let's say they're raised by like uh, you know, a cisgendered husband and wife, you know, these mm-hmm. terms and everything. Um, and they're raised by them, they go to church and they're exposed to all this like conservative and they're exposed yeah. to the heterodoxy or whatever the words are. I don't know. And and like, but they're still like they want to be a woman. Like, what happened here? You know, they you're telling me that like the one day of going on TikTok is uh fought, you know, enough to break the yeah. decades of uh you know shit I, you know what i mean like it's such bullshit. it's just nonsensical it, yeah. it, it makes no fucking sense because that was the case there would be no gay people if that right yeah case. there'd be no yeah. trans like that's a stupid it's it just it it's just like just admit it you want to bully people yeah <laughs> and they're and you basically and, targets. and you think that you can get more people on your side because they're so weird and I'm, I, I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. I'm so sick of hearing the term woke. Oh, if, yeah. I don't take, if you come out and say something about things being woke, I don't take you seriously. We're done. Oh, yeah. That's the that's a great tip off that you're not talking to anyone worth talking to. It's a waste of time. And it's like, I can't, can't stand that word because like there's this guy, I forgot his name. He used to do this thing called the Daily Don. He's this cartoonist. And now I forgot what he, he's called because you know, Trump's not president. And he was showing like the history of like right wingers, and it was like, you know, Nixon, Southern tragedy, yeah, uh, Reagan, welfare queen. I forgot what Trump's the one for Trump, and then for DeSantis, it was just screaming woke, mm-hmm. like it was like the Republican evolution, I guess. Yeah, right. It ends with DeSantis screaming woke, because that's all it is. It's the same shit. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to say, but. Mm-hmm. I think I forgot, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but yeah, I, oh, that was it. Did you see the thing with Roseanne? Oh yeah, yeah. Th- like someone said, Fox News basically spent an entire day trying to resuscitate her career. Well, she they had like an app or something, that, and the great thing was they were advertised. Like if you if thanks to the Super Bowl, you probably know who Greg Gutfeld is because they sure. were advertising him a bunch of times, and uh, you, there was some. I guess there's some app that they have and it's kind of almost like a daily wire plus type thing but for fox oh jesus it's like a conservative channel or some bullshit yeah and i guess they roseanne has a comedy special on it and i saw a clip of it and my god it was it's like you don't need it's amazing good for her she doesn't have to write any jokes she just has to go out there and talk complain about like she's literally just saying get off my lawn yeah like, Dang, these kids they uh they just need to get slapped in the, the butt, but I don't, you know, I'm a woman. These are not women. Yeah. It's like, and she, oh, I don't know God. if you saw what she looks like. She has these weird, like, blonde pigtails. Yeah. She's on Hee Haw or something. <laughs> like, man, you must really know your audience. This is like, oh. kind of, like, yeah. There's some, like, uh, what was her name? Clampett? The uh, uh, Ellie Mae Clampett. Yeah, just like Ellie Mae Clampett from the fucking Hillbillies. Now, now, <laughs> Also, I love what a gig. I mean, what a great like Ugh. it's so made it's so lazy. You don't have to like do anything, you just come out and say the same three like yeah, woke jokes, you know. Or, yeah, like, something about okay, something about blue hairs, something something so Jim about Brewer is people. like that. Jim Brewer's comedy oh, is like so that is bad. Have you me. seen clips of Brewer? I've just seen like things on TikTok and stuff or where he or, makes uh, like all the weird noises and it's so like so stupid. Even, yeah, it's just and like it's all awkward. anti-vax shit too. Yeah, it's he's just like, awkward. He, he started like, doing like a weird like bird Fauci thing, like yeah. Fauci, Fauci. But like, wow, I did find him kind of funny on SNL years ago. Mm, I like to go sure. for it, but whatever. <laughs> hey, you know what? Ugh. Good for him. You know, they 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 found a, a second career in life. Yeah, <laughs> it's clearly yeah. A, a 
as long as there's chuds, Jim Brew will right. be able to pay off his mortgage. <laughs> nice. Okay. Oof. Well, right. on that note, I'm Rob Israel. I'm Joseph K. You still going on about that? Thank you for listening to You Still Going On About That. Um, please like, comment, share, and if you haven't done already, please follow us on Instagram, YSGO, Facebook, YSGO, and Twitter, YSGO. Thank you, and have a great day.